Yeah. <laughs> Scoot over this way. Now we take it to the slow jazz. Hey, Hannah Fons. Hey, Mary Fons. How are you? Well, I'm a little. I'm kind of sweaty because it's hot. Yes, here in New York. It is. Yes, it is hot. How hot is it? It's too damn hot. It's too damn hot. It's too hot. Entirely too hot. But look. Can I just say, Topher J says, yay, Hannah's back. I am. And and I asked, I asked if it was okay if I wore a sleeveless blouse. I was like, you know, and Mary's like, I don't care. Wear whatever you want. And I was like, you know, it's your show. And it's, it's you know, maybe there's an aesthetic. I don't know. I mean, but I'm I was really hot. And I was like, it's either that or I'm going to be in a flop sweat the whole time. And that is. Listen, it's happened to me. I do this show from the office now. And they turn off the air conditioning on the weekends <laughs> and at 6 p.m. every night. And I go like, live at like, 7. Welcome to Quilt. Oh, oh. Quilt nerd. <laughs> exactly. And when, and when anything with tech is like, I'm worried about it, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and it's just rolling down my back. It's rolling down my back. Um, so, so anyway, you were saying it's hot. It's hot out there in New York City. Yeah. Hot time, summer in the city. Back of my neck literally is dirty and gritty. It's true. Um, oh, speaking of dirty and gritty. You know, I love New York City, and it has been great to be here. I leave tomorrow morning. I mean, I get up at like 4 a.m. because my flight is at 6 out of LaGuardia. Oh, LaGuardia, Dark 100. Oh, Dark 100. LaGuardia is beautiful. Has anyone flown into LaGuardia lately? I haven't in four years. It is, I, I honestly had to pinch myself because I was like, did I fly into I'm a different city? I'm looking to see city? if somebody has because it's well, extraordinary. Well, yeah, you, you, you must. You, you must look at the chat. Yeah, and look at the chat. You must help me look at the chat. Okay, let me make the chat a little bigger, too, so we okay. can really have a <laughs> nice, yeah. Dee Dee Brooker says, I'm just here for the fun and celebrating. Crack up. Okay, That's oh, great. you know what, listen, listen, this is an important announcement. <laughs> Stephanie Cake, I forgot to tell you this. Everybody, for the emotes, for the for the special emoticons, you know, the Harriet uh, Aardvark and the Heart Plus, I got a notification. Steph, this is like the kind of thing I need to like immediately tell you about, but it was in the <laughs> middle of nine things. But so, <laughs> so I got this notification from Twitch that said, your old channel name, Yo Mary Fonz, is still the prefix for the emotes, even though your new channel name is Quilt Nerd Show. So when you are a subscriber and you want to use those fun emoticons and stuff, instead of doing Yo Mary Crack Up or Yo Mary Heart Plus, or you know, if you use the emotes, you know what I'm talking about. Instead, put Quilt, I think it's Quilt N or Quilt N. That's the new prefix. I am really sorry that I forgot to tell you, and, and I'm, I'm so sorry, I forgot to tell you, but I just did that today because they were like, you haven't updated this thing yet. So if you are a subscriber and you use those fun emoticons, the new way to type it in is quilt and, and you'll get all of your, you know, your suggestions popping up. I, I'm sorry, I didn't tell you that right away. Yeah. Go ahead, got that cleared up. Sorry, Cake. And by the way, <laughs> Stephanie Cake is here. Stephanie Cake, how are you doing? Doing pretty good. Yeah. I'm sweaty though. You are? Well, you live in a very beautiful yeah. old house. I know. I happen to know that. It's beautiful, but old. Well, yes, but it is also just hot AF outside. Yeah. <laughs> it's hot AF. That's it true. is. It is. Um, so, hey, Sonia RD, subscribed at tier one. You've subscribed for seven months. Could you please hit this? That is a champagne pop, okay. and and also hit. I mean, I don't know the hype horn. 
Thanks, Sonia. It's never not gonna make me smile. It's always gonna make us smile. So, so everybody, um, I will. I, I want to catch up a little bit on the chat and say hi to everybody. Sonia, it's really good to see you. Um, this is my sister Hannah. Uh, we are in New York City. Like I said, I leave tomorrow morning. But one of the things I wanted to do to kind of make it a fun, special week, because it's been a year since I started this thing, since we became a community, um, I wanted to just do fun things. And so um, having Hannah on the show is something we want to do a lot, like at least once a month. But like we'll have to do it remotely. So. Instead, I came here to New York, so we're like IRL, um, and it's been amazing. And tonight's show is good. we're going to talk about some New York quilts. We're going to talk about some family quilts mm -hmm. and family drama. Just kidding. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, so we're going to do that, um, and and it's going to be great. And I'm really glad you're here. Molly's here. This is great. Um, and I just want to say hi to everybody uh, uh, that I can uh, in the time we have. Yovana is here. I'm so glad. Uh, and Jupiter's Nest. So good to see you, Jupiter's Nest. Give it a little champagne. There's also interchangeable the duck squeak, the duck. Yeah, that, that's yeah. equally as I'm good. Just getting hanged. Uh, Padma and Myra and M. Sue John. Those names I recognize from yes. two, once ago and twice ago. These are our peeps. Yeah, These yeah. are like, this is the core crew. The stalwarts. Mm -hmm. Yes, and Fiendor always comes in with a little soundtrack, a little music. That's like the thing that Fiendor does, and it makes me very happy. Uh, Cinean One, it's so good to see you. Saucy Stitcher, Peace Love Puppies, subscribe to Tier 1. They've subscribed for seven months. Currently on a seven month streak. You're very good. Scrapitude, wanna, how about you say hi to these people? M. Hicks. Hey, M. Hicks. Yeah, L. Riggs. Hi, L. Riggs. Warden Bird Nerd. Word and bird nerd, which I have seen many times, and I'm like, that's a clever name. Uh, it is, indeed. Bridgewater, indeed. I'm guessing writer and bird watcher. Probably. Probably. Yeah, yeah. Or um, book reader, uh, novel reader and bird watcher. Yeah, yeah, could be, could be. <coughs> um, um, let's see, and let's see. Um, Bonnie. Bonnie. Let's go ahead, Bonnie. Bonnie. It's, it's okay. It's okay. See, right, I didn't get it for stop. a while. I know, I know. Quack, quack, cat. So, so, Patty Okra, oh my god, I'm so glad you're here. Patty uh, replaced her modem, so she's got good connectivity. Excellent. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna get into the content um, because uh, yeah because that's what we do. If you've never seen Quilt Nerd, um, I'm really glad you're here. If you're coming back, I'm really glad you're here. And um, the I don't always have a co-host, but I do tonight, and I'm thrilled about it. And I'm gonna be sad to leave. But Quilt Nerd is a show that's not gonna teach a person to quilt. There's a lot of really great content out there. Um, that that you can watch and many of you know that you can learn how to make quilts on YouTube on television all kinds of things uh, This is a show about quilts about their history about their about the culture of quilting um, we, we tend to stay mostly uh, in the 20th century and below or 20th century and before, <laughs> um, there's so much. Uh, we're still in sort of the dawn-ish of the 21st century, and because we have Instagram and we have books and magazines and things that are covering the 21st century, uh, it's oh, I see what you, mean. you know, you know, it's, yeah, 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 sure. right. It's like you know, there's so much more that people don't know, and it's not that something is better. Or, you know, there's no hierarchy here. But, but what what I've discovered in my exploration of quilting is what's come before is like. It's so interesting and it's so great. And we often, like anybody, not just quilting, but we're focused on now. Sure. And the, the past holds a lot for us to look at. So we look at art and history. Yes, please. Yeah. Oh, I was just going to say that, like, no matter what your um, <clears throat> what your area of, like, if your area of interest is a creative thing or if you have a creative pursuit, I I, yeah, I've got to speak up. Mm -hmm. So please, in the chat, if you can't hear me, if somebody say something. Because and cake, I, cake will let yeah, us know. Cake because will let I us don't, know. I'm just... She's she's meek and mild, obviously. I'm a murmurer. <laughs> what the, the? We actually the, have. We I, I don't want to interrupt yeah. y'all, but we actually have. Um, we have some um, uh, symbols redemption. Oh, oh and, please, always interrupt. Uh, interrupt. Yeah, it's been thrown out. The, the gauntlet's been thrown, you oh, guys. Oh, um, no. My great cats is at it again, wanting a joke. Oh. And there's been some suggestions that maybe Hannah will tell the joke. Oh my, okay. Although that's really putting you on the spot. But maybe you could do a knock knock joke. You know, okay. this, this is a fine idea. If you watch this channel uh, and watch this show, you accrue channel points, and there are thimbles oh. around here, and you can spend them on I fun have jokes. things. I have like a pack. Well, I have a, a joke packet, but well, to go with. I'm very glad because oh, you need to tell a joke now because someone has just spent their channel points. To force you, to make you. Well, okay. Tell so a joke. When, when you talk, when you when you remind 
the Watchers. Which makes it sound like <laughs> the Watchers. <laughs> when you wish you when you remind them of the stream that you did this morning. Oh yes, back I will. To that, yes. There's that whole little pun moment that we had about it. And oh, I feel like I could... that's pretty good. Okay, okay. It's very you're very good at this. Gotcha. You're good at this. Okay. So it'll be it'll be yeah. It's actually the best kind of joke to tell because it's integrated in the content. Yeah. Um. So we look at quilts here and we talk about them. Can I have we... a trench in point. Can I finish it? Oh yes, of course, please. <sighs> what I meant to say was what happened was, um, one's one's appreciation. Like I paint and do other things and I do some textile stuff, but not quilting necessarily. Um, but it's just like, you know, your appreciation of what you do and all of the, the ideas that you have get, if you, if you have references, like if you know your references, yeah. it's like, you know, you can read a quilt or you can read, like if, if you're into fashion, you can read an outfit and you're just like, oh my gosh, that's, that is definitely not vintage, but that harkens back to da 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 from da 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 and it's a reference. And it's like your enjoyment and your appreciation yes. has levels like an iceberg. You know, you see this and there's a, yeah. and so by doing what you're doing and examining accessibly older stuff yeah. then people are like oh my gosh like there's a precedent for what i'm doing that yeah. i can riff on or like improve or do whatever so yeah i mean it's not it does no no go on go on it doesn't have to be um like dusty history that is is dry and like who cares it's just it's um it adds vibrance to the present. In, indeed, it's context, Hannah. And yes. like I've said that many times, it's like you don't ever have to look at quilt history or, or look at sort of the broader implications of quilts or whatever. Yeah, you can also just ignore it and just quilt. Thousand percent. <laughs> totally For, you it. see, we just start I, doing it. Just start doing it, yeah. and you don't have to. You can enjoy it without all of this stuff. But when you do look, there's the opportunity to have it be like, oh, like even better. So that's what we do. Yeah. You, you did a fine job. Thank you. So. Um, what Hannah was talking about in one of my announcements tonight, uh, and then we're going to talk about the quilt behind us, um, but we, I did an extra bonus stream today because I'm in New York and there was a quilt show in New York at the Czech Center uh, for, in New York City, the New York Czech um, Cultural Center, and um, I went there and there were art quilts by 13 different makers, uh, women from the Czech Republic, and they did brilliant art quilts. They put an exhibit together. Sakwa was involved uh, in producing this exhibit. They were affiliated with the Sakwa organization, Studio Art Quilt Associates. Uh, I'm a member. You should be a member as well. And uh, so I went there and I live streamed, and if you missed the stream, you can watch it here on my Twitch page uh, after this stream is over. You can watch it and, and catch what you missed. It was really cool. So I live streamed from, from there, and that's the kind of stuff we do on this show, on this channel. Whenever I've got a quilt show in within driving distance or cab distance, I'm gonna go see it and I'm gonna take you with me. So I came back from the show and I said to my sister, I says, hey, it went great. The live stream went, went just great. I'm like, are you sure? Better check. And then I said, yeah, thanks for checking. It was great. I checked all the boxes of having a great show. And I'm like, it's a good thing that your Apple Pay worked at the uh, for the admission cost, otherwise you would have had to cut a check. But I said, no, it's cool. Checkout went fine. <laughs> well, <laughs> just go ahead. Does that count? Is that okay? Sonia says she loved the tour. It was great. I hope, I hope Bonnie loved the tour this morning. It was great. Quilting politics. Sue says, well, I think, I think, I hope we fulfilled the, uh... <laughs> Check the joke. Off. Well, okay. checking the joke off the list. Thank you. Okay. Okay. I'm sure that we'll, we'll, we'll have more. But... I'm sure we will. We better check on that. I'll check. Okay. So, uh, what we do here is we start with, uh, with a quilt. The quilt behind us, it changes every time. Every show. That is, uh, that is one heck of a quilt. I love this quilt. I love mandalas anyway. Yeah. Um, not just aesthetically, but symbolically. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I have them all over myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, um, I also really like Paula Needle Stern. Indeed. Did I? Did I? Did I? Oh, I scooped you. Did you scoop it? No, it's great. It's you. great. No, indeed, it is Paula Needle Stern. Yes. And and in fact, oh, by the way, Sohani uh, uh, on the show mm -hmm. some time ago um, helped me with my pronunciation uh, and, and Mundala. She was saying it's a more Mundala than Mandala, and and that's coming from Sohani. And so I 
picked up that pronunciation and, and have uh, have learned that. So I just wanted to tell you, Sohani, that I, I have retained that information. Um, so indeed, this is a Paula Needle Stern um, uh, uh, piece. It's a detail shot of one of her works. And she she is a genius. She is a genius. And the reason I picked this is because I want to hear Hannah's thoughts on it. Um, but also, hey, Richard's Threads. I'm so glad you're back. Right. Give him a duck. Thanks for coming back. This is my sister, Hannah. I'm glad you're here. I'm in New York City, in the East Village. Um, I wanted to get Hannah's thoughts on this on this detail shot of one of Paula Nadelstern's quilts because, uh, and I think this is just pieced. I don't believe it's quilted yet. Uh, Enhance. Why? It's very strange. Hmm. Um, anyway, um, because Hannah knows Paula, has met Paula. Yeah, several times. Um, mm -hmm. Wow, that's very strange. I have. Did you touch anything? <laughs> no. What? I, you didn't touch literally, it. I'm on camera. You um, know. Yeah, yeah, I know. Um, that's very strange. So, so, but Paula Nadelstern lives in New York City, mm -hmm. and she lives in the Bronx, right? Yes. And she, uh, I, one thing I know about Paula, and I've met her a couple times. She, my mom, our mom, and her were uh, have been friends for some time. And my mom, by the way, is coming to the show tonight, so she'll be here if she's not here already. Um, uh, she told me that Paula has Paula makes her um, her quilts in her home, right? She doesn't have an, ex, an an outside studio. She makes them in her apartment in New York. I don't know if that's still true, but I heard that. Well, that's what I heard. Yeah, that's what I heard. I mean, I feel like the chances are pretty good of a New York quilter making their quilts in their home because. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I mean, a quilter, a quilter of. Paula's caliber might very well be in a position mm -hmm. to have a studio mm -hmm. that they don't actually sleep in. Um, right. But right. most New York creatives don't. <laughs> don't. It's just there's it's too expensive, yeah. right? So um, so <laughs> is this like quote smart advanced? Exactly, S. J. Pepper. It is. Um, it is Paula Needlestern. So I have some information about her, and I, I have a picture of us together. Uh, here in this apartment in New York City uh, at Hannah's place, but but it was I just couldn't find it. I looked and looked. Um, I'm going to read to you, and, and and this is a teaser for Paula Nadelstern because we're going to do a whole you know a whole section on Paula Nadelstern. She's someone who you know if you don't know about her, you should because she really she really is legendary in the quilt world because of her technique, mm -hmm. because of her expert, her artistry and her engineering. Yes. So she will take a piece of fabric and create these kaleidoscopic yeah. um, works. I mean, look at the piecing. Let me, let me really zoom in. I mean, this is what we're looking at. Mm -hmm. each, each of these, these are pieces of fabric, yeah. separate pieces of fabric, right? Well, and also to see a print and then, and then pick a, like a piece of it. Because for, yes. the first thing, when this was very small, I was just like, what am I looking at? I'm right. like, are all of those little like, French curls and like little whorls and different things. I'm like, tell me that's not all appliqued. Oh, which wouldn't put it past her, mm -hmm. but I was still just I was like, <gasps> mm -hmm. but so now that I'm looking at it, I'm like, okay, cool. So then what does which no less impressive and crazily cool is the fact that mm -hmm. you know I'm looking at those almost look like mm -hmm. um, like Versace print scarves, you know, mm -hmm. and it's like so she's picked sections of the print mm -hmm. and then like cut it up, reconnected it to make the to like uh, it's just yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. So to see a print and be like, oh, that would work really well, and to come out with oh, something. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Burp, burp, burp. Yep. Sorry. Ah! Oh, that's even better. No, no, that's not what we want. Okay, sorry. <laughs> it's literally this is the sorry. visual opposite of what yeah, we're talking. Yeah, exactly. About. That was not elegant and beautiful At or all. masterful in any way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry. Go on. Anyway, um, but to be able to see a section of a print that's no, you know, that's co complex already mm -hmm. and a repeat. And to be like this section, if we flipped it and mirrored it and right. did this, and to come up with something that's as visually harmonious and gorgeous and exactly. radiant as this. Exactly. Uh, Cake, what, do you have something on your mind to say? Yeah, we're, uh, I just want to confirm. This is pieced, right? This isn't like English paper piece. I think it's pieced, and when I it looked like it to me, like those points, just the way that they kind of were like pressed, it looked like it was pieced to me. Mm -hmm. So. Yes, yeah, I believe it is because we can see the seams just beyond the blue, the teal points, right? We can see these seam, mm -hmm. these seam marks. Um, What's English oh paper my God, S. J. Pepper says no. Word and Bernard says that looked like a vibrator, but I think it was the gimbal. Indeed, it I was the gimbal. The same you know what? Thing. Look, I look, that thing. hit that right there. <laughs> these people, they're rowdy, is what they are. Tell you what. 
Word and Bird. Was it Word and Bird yes. Nerd. Word and Bird Nerd. I said the exact same thing when I saw that. I was like, that looks like a medical device. Oh, <laughs> what, what my table? God. And you know who just showed up? Mom. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Word and Bird Nerd. <laughs> Ridiculous. You just, oh, no, we're in bird nerd. You go sit in here. <laughs> oh, oh, Seventy says, our mom's been here. She's been here. <laughs> yeah. so, we're in bird nerd. needs to go sit and think about what they've done. Molly, thank you for subscribing at Tier 2. You have subscribed for 10 months. I appreciate you. Um, yes, everyone needs to think about what they've we're done. We're going to send you the gambrel. <laughs> God, God. Sorry. So, the gimbal? Gambrel? Gimbal? Gimbal. That thing. God. <laughs> so, anyway. So, so this is some of Paul and Nato Stern's work. And let me just, let me just uh, tell you this much. Hey, why don't you, like, zoom in okay, and kind of zoom out if you want, you know, kind of. Let kinda... me know if this makes you car sick. Yeah, people. just you take it slow and, you know, okay. Um, I would just, I want to just read just a little bit from Paula's website. She says, quote, Kaleidoscope. The very word promises surprise and magic, change and chance. Exploding with visual excitement, a kaleidoscopic design organizes an abundance of light and color, form and motion into a complex and, there you go, and coherent <laughs> image. <laughs> My goal is to harmoniously integrate the idea of a kaleidoscope with the techniques and materials of quilt making. I try to free myself from a conventional sense of fabric orderliness, seeking a random quality in order to imitate the succession of chance interlinkings and endless possibilities synonymous with kaleidoscopes. Uh, and this Mr. one Hoppers. other little piece here too, I make quilts on the same block in the Bronx where I grew up. Oh yeah, hit the church button, I think. Yer. 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 Yep. Uh, being a New Yorker wrapped up in the fat, oh, that's beautiful. Being a New Yorker wrapped up in the fabric of city life creates an inherent paradox, contrasting the traditional image of quilt making as part of a simple make-do rural way of life with my own complex urban shaped space, unquote. Isn't that great? Yeah. Cool, right? It That's makes so sense cool. why we'd want a Paula Nadal Stern uh, bit of piecing, and it's of course it's a detail shot. This is a, a close up, as, as you can probably tell, of a, a Nadal Stern work. That is, I can stare at that all day. I know, isn't it great? Yeah. And and what's really wonderful is when we look at Paula Nadal Stern's work uh, more closely. Um, this is one of like. 20 or 30 of these in one quilt. It's just Oh, this impressive. is a little. Yes, it's a yeah. detail shot. I thought this was the whole thing. No. I mean, I thought it was like, okay, detail. No, no. It's it's one of these many, and many of them like sort of interlock. So, so you know, stay tuned. Thanks, Miss Laney. Hey, hype train. We did a hype train. All right. It's like, just like people supporting the channel, and that's really awesome. Nice. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, so, so this... Uh, so those pieces are even tinier than... Yes. Yes. Amazing. This is a reason to keep watching Quilt Nerd, uh, and uh, you'll see more about Paula Nadelstern and yeah. so many other people. Um, Hannah, why don't you take a look at the chat? I don't know why, but uh, it's quite unfortunate because I, I lost a thing. I lost a thing that I had uh, ready to go. So I need yep. to just arrange a few uh, slides. Okay. So I'm wondering if you can talk uh, about just, just, I know this is kind of a broad question, uh -huh. but I want to know your thoughts because here we have you with us, you know, you're here, whatever. You are not a quilter, no. Um, but you grew up around quilts your whole life. Oh yes. So you are, you, and you lived in New York City for twenty something years. Uh, I moved here in two thousand, so yeah, twenty two okay. years. Not that that one has something to do with the other. We know from Paula Nadelstern's quote that you know New York and quilts, it's all sure. that. But what when you think of quilts, like yeah. we were going to Google quilts, the word quilts. Oh yeah. And, and I do want to do that, but I, I want to just Google the word quilts. We, we're talking about doing this, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so it's fascinating. Do, I think it's fascinating. Like we never, I've never. I've never. Why would I? Have you ever Googled quilts? Like, or quilters. Yeah, or quilting. Or, right. What comes up when you do that, you know? But before we do that, tell me, hmm. like, what. Oh, look, look, look. Richard Thread just resubscribed for a month, and oh, that's yeah. what happens on I, the screen. I, I love that little. Yeah. Mimi Gif, it's so cute. Oh, 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 yeah, and jo like, Joysec, she resubscribed uh, for two months. Watch your little paws, little cat. Yeah, that that yeah. footer is just Anytime don't worry so about them. When somebody resubscribes, you get the cat, you know? Nice. So awesome. You know, yeah. I think it's you. To the cat twice in a row? That's awesome. Yeah, they're gift subs. They're, they're uh, yeah, they're Lisa, or Elrig's, Elrig's uh, did some gift subs. That's right. 
the El Riggs, thank nice you so much for gifting two subscriptions. For, yeah. for folks who just got those gift subscriptions from El Riggs, it's one month free. And so after your month is up from enjoying the show, we hope that you will resubscribe. Is this an AMA from Hannah feature? <laughs> and my I mean, God, there there actually, an if anonymous I... gifter as well. Oh, an anonymous gifter as well. That's great. Um, Oh, oh, SJ, SJ Pepper is very good. Um, so yeah, we could do an AMA. So, so for, okay. for while I do this thing, sorry, tell me what, what is your sense, of, like, what, is, what do quilts mean to you? I guess oh. is the easiest way to say it. And now, just forgive me while let I let me get my get my get my sport coat with elbow patches in my pipe. Like, yes, oh, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And and talk to the people and yes. keep them entertained, Hannah, because I need to okay. do something that I did before, but I have to redo. That's okay. sure. Yeah, and it's that, and you're not going to have to look at that. Believe me. I feel me. like we should just <laughs> should throw that on there. <laughs> I'm not doing that. Can you put it behind us? I could I put it. No, no, no. Just do what you got to do. I'm, 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 I'm buying time. Lord help me. Thank you. All right. So what, what quilts? I mean, it's a very hard question to answer because, you know, as the as the firstborn Fonz child, you know, our mom got into quilting when I was a little baby. Mm -hmm. And so there's many pictures of me, or well, some pictures of me, in like, you know, just just passed out in the um, Varied Industries building at the Madison County Fairgrounds while mm -hmm. mom is, you know, dressed in a, you know, like a pinafore <laughs> and, yeah. and, you know, and doing a quilting mm -hmm. sort of uh, a, like a demo mm -hmm. for those that people file through to look at the quilt contest mm -hmm. and all that stuff. And so, um, so I would say my, like my earliest understanding of quilting was probably as homespun and and country and wholesome mm -hmm. as the stereotype would suggest mm -hmm. but I would say also very quickly mm -hmm. like we started to have books on like the one that you you referenced on the, the first the show that we did from Wisconsin mm -hmm. that I was the first, the oh, first yeah. time I would guest it on the it. art quilt book yeah mm -hmm. and so like we you know and then then I'm also 46 so like so you know in the 80s there were coffee table books in our house of mm -hmm. like art quilts and um you know, sort of like non-traditional kind of stuff. So I had a good sense that there was more than just like Holly Hobby and right, log yeah. cabins mm -hmm. and, you know, sunflower, mm -hmm. sunflower Sue. No, that's not. Sunbonnet Sue? Sunbonnet Sue. Sunflower Sue, I like it. Yeah. Holly Hobby is not a cool block. Holly Hobby was a motif. A doll or something. But you understand what I meant. Yeah. It's sun, Sunbonnet Sue. Okay, fine. You know what I meant. Yes. Um, so. Mm -hmm. You're doing great. Thanks. <laughs> I, need, I need you to do so, what you're doing. Yep. Right. So, um, but also too, like, just my own temperament and kind of interest in why, like, why creative people create. Um, and then particularly people who create objects, like, you know, as opposed to like a piece of dance or theater mm -hmm. or music or whatever. Like, if you're creating material culture, I think that... Um, Immediately, I mean, I don't, I, I, I never was like, I don't want to make quilts. I think quilts are dumb. Like, quilts, what, it, my mm -hmm. interest, I could make a quilt. In fact, mom and I did make a quilt last summer. That's true. You're going to um, have to share that picture with me. Oh, yeah, I should. Um, but, uh, but, like, to me, it's always been, like, mad obvious what the, the, the like, the symbolism of quilts mm. is also the same as their function. Mm. Like, I mean, as an object, you know, because it's, we were saying this a couple shows ago when we were in Wisconsin, that, that like, you know, the quilt is, historically you know it's a it's a household tool right you know it's interesting it keeps you, you say that mm -hmm. keeps you warm in the winter mm -hmm. is a blanket for the babies to play on in the yard in the summer mm -hmm. is a blanket i mean heck walk it back you know some people get born at home back in the day so mm -hmm. like you know you mm -hmm. catch a baby with a quilt mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. somebody passes away you could wrap them in a quilt mm -hmm. you could bury people in a quilt mm -hmm. um you know the you know you're in a wagon going somewhere the quilt is literally going to keep you alive so mm -hmm. Um, the fact that they were such eminently practical objects that people, and up until, you know, pretty recently women, endowed all of this creative energy and artistic thought and aesthetic thought into, because they don't have to be like that. That's right. You could literally take two big pieces of cloth, mm -hmm. stick them together with some sheep wool in between them or whatever, and you would probably have an even more functional, warmer thing than a quilt. But instead... We're gonna stitch it real thin, so you need like two of them. Like if you're on the prairie in the winter, like one little quilt's probably not gonna cut it. But yet, we have these gorgeous things. So um, it's just now I'm kind of now no, I'm rambling. No, no, I, no. You're doing great because we had a couple gift subs and a hype train, and mom is like very proud. So oh, well, then you're okay. doing you're doing good. <laughs> right. Okay. You're doing so good. yeah. So I think I think that like 
it's one thing, you know, it's, it's okay, and I'll, I'll finish, can I, I'll, I'll land the plane with this. Lovely. As much as, you know, privileged people have made, you know, people who have patrons who pay them to create things, you know, it's Michelangelo or whomever it is working for the Medici's in Italy, and they have all this, you know, it's like, here, have a studio and have all the time you need and, like, paint my portrait or carve this marble. Mm. Cool. So, like, you expect aesthetic. Yes. You know, like, you're paying for it, that's right? Their, so, yes, like, that's, that's their job. Right. You had right. one job, Michelangelo, yeah. uh -huh. to carve that piece of marble. Nicely done. But... To, ta to have, you know, uh, mm -hmm. women who, mm -hmm. this is like, you know, and if you work, walk it back, not like far enough, you have, you know, women who don't have suffrage, mm -hmm. who don't have autonomy, mm -hmm. who can't own property, mm -hmm. who work in their fingers to the bone mm -hmm. and having babies mm -hmm. out on the prairie mm -hmm. and in the swamplands and in the mountains and all that kind of stuff. And they got to take care of them and they got to feed the chickens and they got to milk the cows mm -hmm. and do all the things. And yet still, to and be like, oh, God, and i got to make blankets, too. And some of them were literally enslaved by other people. Oh, absolutely. Right? Like, That's what I I'm mean, saying. I yeah, mean, yeah. Pick, pick, the, pick the level of, of, of oppression, oppression and, and right? disempowerment that yeah. you want, and, and there's somebody there who's occupying right. that space. And, oh, my God, instead of just being like, fabric, fabric, batting, tie it, you know, and on to the next one, they're like, no, we're going to make this as beautiful as we can possibly make it. So... And that's that's sort of magical rather than just that's what that is. You're very good. Thank you. You're very good. Cheers, man. Cheers. 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 Um, yes, you're great. Mm. And you're right. So, so I've got something for you. I've got a video tonight. Let's go here. She's good, right? My head off. Oh yes, I'm sorry. I, I'm so sorry about that. So. But I also don't want to be. It's no, it's well, you're wonderful. You're perfect. So, I mean, I can, I don't want to take the chat off because no, it's fine. Okay. Um, but you can be more center than me tonight. Definitely. Because I, what, can I take a huge halo? What? What are you no, doing? No, no, no. Make, make me big again. Stop. Oh, I just want to do God. one thing. Make you big again. Make me big again. That's what Madonna's saying. <laughs> oh, that's, oh, wow. Okay. I'm going to, no, no, no. no I'm going to get out of here. Don't do it. Oh my God. Do no. it. Do it. Do it. Do that. Do, now do this. Let me try one. Let me try one. This is this is ridiculous. <laughs> time. But look, look. It's the only. When you am I gonna be here again? Scoot over. Scoot down. Down. Oh yeah. Over. There we go. It's Mary. <laughs> Wait. No. Scoot over a little bit more. Yes. <laughs> I just need Lou. Lou is the baby Jesus. <laughs> okay. okay. For the for the love of God. Um. No. No. You, you is. Um, thanks everybody for, for hanging out with us. You know, it's, uh, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's just great. Little Bird Stitch. Hey. So, um, and Little Bird Stitch, just so everybody uh, can make sure, you know, it's, it's the quilt nerd is the, now the prefix for the, for the emotes. Okay. So that changed just today. So if you want to do the totally emotes. Totally a success because of Little House on the Prairie. Yes. Oh yeah. Holly I got, Hobby. I have a story about that actually. Good, good. Well, let's, let's look at this next thing and then we will. Uh, go on to some some other fun stuff. Okay, so um, so t so I went to the Strand bookstore the other day, um, and famous I famous much beloved bookstore here on 19th Street in the city. That's right, right by right Union Square, right, and uh, miles or of 19th, books. 12th Street. Eight, eight miles of books, I mm -hmm. think, all in. You have eight miles Something of books. Like so the Strand is legendary. It's been around forever. Uh, oh, Joyce. I Joyce says, love you, Mary and Hannah. Oh, my God. And it's a first-time chat. It's a first-time chat. What? Oh, my God. Okay. Joyce, we're so glad you're here. The quilt nerd thing is like you, and you'll get welcome baskets in the chat. Give some welcome baskets for Joyce um, in the in the chat because uh, we just we just love, we love yeah. new people. It's so great. It's a great community, and I'm glad you're here to check it out. So I was, uh, I can't be in New York City and not go to the Strand. So I went, I went to the Strand. And I found I went right to the quilt section, of course, and I found a few really good books that I hadn't that I didn't have. And one of the best ones I found that you too can purchase through Abe Books. Uh, we are affiliate. We have a Quilt Nerd affiliate link. So if you purchase this very out of print, very used book uh, through Abe Books, uh, we get a, a ducat decade or two, uh, yes. a, a shekel. And so um, so this is one of the best books I've seen in some time. And I told my mom, sorry, I told our mom, usually I'm just alone, so it's my mom. Yes. I told mom to make sure to be on the show tonight, to be watching, wow. because she 
is in this is in this book and she may be like oh yeah I know about that but it's really cool so so threads magazine I pulled very this funny up. Sonia what 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 who's she was ty- she's typing the welcome baskets because you know the whole thing with the extension it changed yeah Sonia yeah. yeah Sonia yeah you have to do quilt quilt I see what nerd you did now. there I know she's joking oh 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 <laughs> okay yeah. good good I see, I, I see what you did when, when things change it's like stressful but but yeah so so this is about thre- will you read about yes. threads magazine because many of you will know threads okay but some won't all right threads magazine um threads is at the heart of an active engaged community built on a passion for sewing our readers have made threads the most trusted resource for sewing advice for 35 years Slow down a little bit threads offers 100 percent sewing content a wide range of in-depth useful information from noted experts with a mix of inspiring features and step-by-step instruction, Threads is accessible to sewers eager to advance their sewing, tailoring, fitting, garment construction, and embellishment skills. Threads readers spend time learning about new skills and tools and have the resources to buy patterns, machines, tools, and materials frequently. Mm. Yes, lovely. By com- yes, go on. Yes. One more little bit. Mm-hmm. By combining our authoritative brand with a wide range of capabilities, Threads offers integrated solutions that enable advertisers to, well, this is from their media yes, kit. Yes, that's a media kit, <laughs> right, right. But, but They thre- deliver superior yes. results across all platforms, print, digital, video, social, and more. Indeed, and they have been around for a long time. Yes. And this book uh, was published in 1991. And I looked at it, the moment I looked through it, and by the way, this is the gimbal that was we were talking about earlier that does look a bit rude. It looks like a scope of some sort. Okay, all right. So I'm looking through this this book. Up, I was on a ladder in the Strand book, Bookshop, bookstore, and what one of the first things I turned to was this. I was like, mm. oh, so we're talking about cool 1991 yeah so th- this is a compilation from threads uh some of, of their quilting articles some of the articles that they publish about quilting because threads was not just about quilting it was about all kinds of textile making and so i saw this and being in new york city you know everybody just looks so not everybody looks great but you got these cool chicks man and they're so great and i was like i would totally wear this 1991 pattern look at this dress this is oh, yeah. awesome also oh wait sorry let me go any back number down. of people like i've seen this somebody was wearing that outfit like yesterday on the l train hang on the I'm exact gonna... one yeah 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 look at this cool cool like like vest shirt placard pla- pla- placket sort of thing isn't that great what is it well i mean it's, it's a tabard a... A tabard. Oh, well, tabard. Oh, oh, yeah, there you go. That's all I got. There I'm going to go to bed. That was... As Jay Pepper says, uh, uh, I don't know what you see. You say ridiculous things. She's just... Little known alternative fact. <laughs> Threads was the precursor to Threadless. Hilarious. 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 As Jay Pepper is very funny. Many of these people are. It had sense to put the dog in the photo. Well, I, I mean, what photo yeah. is not improved by the presence of a dog? Right? Exactly. But these are really cool. Cindy says, "Lord, Lord, I graduated high school in 1991. Yeah, I mean, oh, 94. so Esprit Bridgewater says, so yes. Esprit. Oh my gosh, Esprit. Come on, Esprit. Esprit. My and- Esprit sweatshirt when I was in like late elementary, early middle school. My Esprit sweatshirt was like my prized possession. Yeah. Because yeah. it was too cool for guests. They didn't want guests, because everybody had guests. I well, we couldn't it. afford guests. Well, and I like, somehow finagled in a spree something or other from well, some grandma. <laughs> look at this puppy. Um, so <laughs> so the other thing, too, is a spree. The headquarters hung Amish quilts in their headquarters. The Esprit Amish that's quilt right. collection. Oh, you remember that? Right. We've talked about it. Lord, I haven't thought so, of that in 40 so, years, probably. I know. I know. Oh, that's why we're here. That's why Quilt Nerd is here. Yeah. So, so then there's also, and so I didn't, I don't have a scanner here, everybody. Mm-hmm. So I had to take pictures of the magazine, of the, uh, of this book, um, here at the apartment. So they're not, they're a little bit wonky, but I, this is a, this I is one of these moments. Because Judith uh, Lara Zellere, who made the quilt that is uh, pictured here in this uh, close-up shot here about quilting strip by strip, um, she is going to come up in the show a little bit later. Uh, but this is, it's a fantastic it's amazing. book. It, uh, yes, it's an I mean, amazing quilt. quilt. Yeah. Yes, of course. But, but, the, but the actual uh, collection of articles that they have in this, I mean, I just can't say enough about it. Eli Leon's a, a 
person of consequence in the in this actually I have a better uh, picture. He wrote an article that was republished in this about African American uh, uh, quilt techniques. Mm -hmm. uh, very interesting stuff. He's an interesting person, dead. Uh, but uh, cut it down the middle and send it to the other side. Oh, I, gosh, love I love that. the olive and black one. Of course, wonderful. That would, right? I mean, that would look that would look absolutely one hundred percent at home in my house. Early stripper, indeed. Um, that's SJ. Yes, yes, indeed, it would, it would, it would just, it would be yeah. fantastic. And this fellow, I know his name. What is Charles Cater? Yeah, he's a famous uh, quilt maker of that era in that particular region, right? Uh, Gussie Wells, mm -hmm. also. So, so fantastic article, right? And and do you know? Rosie Lee Tompkins it, it had a huge exhibit here. I don't know that you would have noticed about it or whatever but she had a huge exhibit mm. here at, and in, in is Berkeley that it is I have oh, then I mean I know it's, it's work like, but like yeah absolutely. It's, it's iconic yeah. and so, so they gave a lot of room to this particular article mm -hmm. which I really appreciate yeah. and there's a lot that's a lot of words and let's put our editor brains together yeah. mom you could weigh in on this too how many words how many words is this article okay there's that so there's right. this so got half. there's this there's this and that's it what's that like 1,500, 2,000 words? Yeah, yeah, 1,500, yeah. 2,000, exactly. Um, I'm not being as good on the chat tonight, I have to say, because Hannah's here. I'm watching. So, okay, good. Please please watch, and I hate to ignore SJ the chat Pat, or yeah. not look. Folks critique the dog's eyebrows. I saw that. <laughs> He's a 10, his eyebrows are just little dots. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Oh, I spent most of, so, uh, Myra Khan says, spent most of her disposable income a university student on Esprit and Benetton. Those were the days. Yes. Yeah. Yes. The Benetton, the Benetton, early Benetton advertising was just, it was unlike anything that ever happened before. It, exactly. You know, one of the reasons I love this yeah. audience and these people is this is a classic quilt nerd comment from mm -hmm. Cine. The Strand is the only time I've been in a bookstore and was overwhelmed. overwhelmed. <laughs> yeah. Because moly. It we, is a whole thing. It is a whole thing. You're like, I'm just going to pop in. No, the you're not. <laughs> no. You're not. Exactly. Um, so, so the Hawaiian quilt, there was a great article on Hawaiian quilts. Again, lots of, lots of room paid, lot, you know, this fellow, you know, this fellow quilting and, yeah. and, and I just, just a really, really good, good magazine. And so I'm flipping through and what do my wondering eyes appear? Oh, wow. Talk about like 1980s oh, shirts yes. that we had. Yep. <laughs> Yep. So great. Um, so I'm looking around at this at this thing, and what do I find? I find do, 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 this. And who? What, oh. what? What is the title of this article, Hannah? Alphabet apple, applique. Applique. <laughs> Pin matching a needle rolling point of the way to accuracy. Wait, this way. I keep. I by, keep doing that. By none other than Marianne Fonts. Marianne Fonts. Reminds you of Quilt Folk. You know what? It is a really classy publication, Mom. I completely agree. And Mom, this is your article. And this read, is, oh, read Bridgewater. Mm -hmm. and, and, and Powell's is also, yeah, you don't pop into Powell's mm -hmm. in, in Portland. No way. No way. Um, indeed, the backwards end. So, Mom, this is your article. And yeah, that is a very good letter A. That's nice. So, and this is a serious uh, article, too. And look what's, look what, look what's published as World Peace. Oh, yes, I'm, and I was looking at the diagrams, too, so they had someone illustrate those. I know, and this has been my dream. I've always wanted, instead of photographs mm -hmm. of people doing things, I've wanted illustrations, beautiful illustrations, and that's what Threads did. Look at these awesome, look at that, it's so good. Yeah. It's so good, those I love great. it. And, and just winsome and charming. Mom commented. I believe I wrote three articles for Threads magazine. I think the book is a pickup from the magazine. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, it totally is. Um, Oh yes, mm -hmm. and and there there may be another one that you wrote, Mom. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So, so um, so this is interesting too. I mean, Ooh. talk about like dated, you know. But but uh, but <laughs> the ask, computer. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay. The computer. Sure. Of fractals and pixels and rotating cool. quilt blocks using the computer as a quilt design tool. And this was what year? What ninety one? Ninety one is when this was when this was all put together, you know, repurposed from the magazine as a book about quilts. So this might have been earlier, but I mean, Paint programs. Look at what they're talking about. Look at that thing. Oh wow, yeah. I mean, I don't even know what we're. It's like literally your child's Tamagotchi. Yep. Had more, <laughs> like more oh, processing power oh, than that thing. Look at this, That's Hannah. Look at oh, this. Oh 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 wow. Okay, hang on, hang on. Look at that menu, right there. Yeah. 
the the tools you can mm. use. I remember all of these. Absolutely. Oh my goodness! And squabbling over who got to play on the computer. Oh. With the dial-up modem and that. Oh. oh, it was not good. No, it wasn't. Um, Penny Catherine, by the way, says I was too poor to even know the designer names in high school. <laughs> if I wanted clothes, I had to make them. I hunted fabric shells for discounts and fabric under two dollars per yard. Oh, well, worst basement bargains. There you go. Yeah, you know what? Penny, you probably looked better. Ooh, ooh. You probably looked better than most because I mean, you made your own clothes, right? You made them. To yeah, fit nobody's you. looking all that great in like a what was it the um, Pepe jeans, like oh. big dog. Big dog t-shirt. You know that? Remember that? S.J. Pepper. Yes, I do. S.J. Pepper says this looks a lot like the intro quilt. It does. She's trolling. She's super Stop trolling. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, it felt like sweets. Hey, Charles. Yeah, normal, normal tools. tools. As opposed to what? <laughs> yeah, right. The fancy tools. Normal tools. Right. I just, I remember all of this. So I thought this Threads magazine was a cool trip down memory lane. And it, it really was is. also, it was also uh, worth looking at because, um, these are great articles. I mean, I, I spend a lot of time, Hannah, in these old, old, old books. Yeah. And there's such interesting stuff in them. And we don't, and we, we don't, they don't make quilt magazines like this anymore. No, they don't. They don't do quilters newsletter stuff like this anymore, or they. Mm -hmm. The quilt world isn't right now, except for Quiltfold. But the Quiltfold is all features about people, for the most part. This is interesting deep dives into technique and you know what I might be wrong I might be wrong there might be some stuff uh, similar to this that I I want to know about but 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 the, this is mom's other article by the way but but it's just it's a different magazine to me it's a different yeah. publication and it's uh, thrilling because it it's deeper it's uh -huh. it's meatier yeah. you know well and also impressive given given the era in which it came out um, the the sophistication and the um, I mean, inclusivity is such a. It, 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 I'm, I worry that that term is getting overused to the point of almost meaninglessness yeah, these days. Yeah. But like, but it's. I mean, the the references that they're talking about and like, I don't know. This it was definitely ahead of its time, and I appreciate it more now looking at it than I did when it was on our in our living room, <laughs> like in a stack in our living room. You know yeah, I mean? exactly, exactly. And this quilt, by the way, that attends Mom's article about the whole cloth quilt. Let me get to the caption and then I'll go Super cool. yeah it is sorry oh actually you know what here can you oh hold on. Wait, wait, wait white work right yeah I know but what's really cool about having that 1868 magazine, see that's the thing I can read it while you zoom oh. in on it because oh, right. gotcha. <laughs> I have the thing um, yeah 1868 it says uh, this is a whole cloth quilt such as this white work brides quilt oh yeah no, it's, oh yeah great great um, whole white work a uh, white work bride's quilt with Trapunto made by Eliza G. Clark of Dale, Indiana in 1868 Crying were out. often the master works of a quilter's career. Not able to disappear among patchwork or prints, the stitching had to be flawless. Uh, oh, interesting. Photo by Susan Kahn from the collection of Bob and Artist James, who started the Quilt Museum in okay. Lincoln, Nebraska. Oh, yeah, the, artist, uh, the Bob and Artist James. Yeah. So that is very exciting, because guess what? In 1991, the museum didn't exist yet. Pretty cool. Uh, and then we have some incredible templates and things, and uh, they've got, you know, oh. more feather stuff. Oh, yeah, this, Mom, this is your other thing. They included all of your three articles that you wrote for Threads, what? Mom, in this book that's really cool. Mom says, I remember feeling rather cool and chic because I was published in Threads, yes. plus they paid well. Well, in 91, we were both, I was in junior high, you were in high school. I was a freshman in high school, sophomore in high school. Thanks, Threads. Two, three. No, 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 uh, sophomore. Yeah. yeah, thanks, Threads. <laughs> thanks, Threads. Probably paid for that as a sweatshirt. Yeah, exactly, exactly. The other Mary Kate, the other, she's a friend of mine. Mm -hmm. I bought a couple dozen vintage copies of Threads at the thrift store a few months ago. There's a lot of really great stuff in oh, there. Yeah. I love Threads. Maybe we do a Threads well, and Friday. Sometime. Also, then, let's let's also give, uh, give daps to that quilt because Did you say daps? Yeah, that's like a... No, that's like a like a high five and a pound. Oh, not like dab, like marijuana. No, my goodness, get your head out of the. I I don't know anything about that, and I'm not kidding. It's not it, it's <laughs> daps. See, cake knows. Cakes like it's daps. Everyone knows daps, and I'm like drugs. <laughs> are you smoking the jazz cigarettes oh, again? Oh my! Are you having the grass? Are, are you, you taking are you, the grass? Are you doing the pot? Are you taking the pot? <laughs> no, I'm not. I hate You'd it. You'd be completely okay with when your rights to do it in New York, because it's legal here, you know. This is a crack-up. I'm up. just saying. 
When you want to graduate from crisps, you let me know. Anyway, what I was going to say, which is germane to the conversation here, is that what we have... No, we this... Sorry. Pastrami, pastrami tacos is laughing. That's good. The weed. Um, yeah, go ahead. So, go ahead. here we have what, to my eye, looks like either, a, you know, it's this is a very Amish, and, and uh, someone oh. in the chat said it, which is why oh, yes. I'm saying it out loud. Yes, Because I'm agreeing with you it and Amish, validating indeed. what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Super, super Amish, but yet then, if you can zoom, yeah, there's course. like, you know, the, the least plain and most exuberant way of quilting something, which is feathering. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, So we indeed. here have the juxtaposition of the plain and the anti-plain into gorgeous effect. And can we, the, the little border and that super teal of course, color? Of that's not even, that's not even feathery. That's like, I don't even know. Hannah, you're rocking this. It's an 1870 quilt, an Amish quilt from Lancaster, Pennsylvania, 1870. And then somebody went buck wild No, no, and no, it they way? did it. That's an the Amish lady quilt. Indeed, like indeed. That's I the, would have thought that's the that crazy. would have been verbal to. No, no, I, no, that's what's kind of crazy about those. It's really subversive because in, in, yeah. in, in fabric and in uh, uh, patchwork, you know, there's not much patching, patchwork going right. on there, right? So so the Amish thing, you know, about, you know, being plain right. and whatnot and, and not wasting time. So if you do like a crazy quilt that has a zillion pieces in it or like a crazy hexagon right. mosaic quilt, that's to not, them, you know, and I'm yeah, you're screwing paraphrasing, <laughs> you're, screwing, you're wasting time and you're wasting fabric because all those seams, right? Sure. So the fewer pieces that you have, mm -hmm. the less time you waste. But then with their quilting, they go all, you know, they go hog wild. And, and, and is it's the, like, is that oh. A, is that a not uncommon thing? It's very common. It's, really? it's how they quilted for the I, most part. You know, I had zero idea. I thought it press was just. Press that, press that. I literally thought it was just grids. Oh, God. That's great. <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know. I wasn't told. I wasn't taught. I didn't know. No, I, and for real, I thought it was just, you know, let's throw, throw right. a grid on it and call it a day. Isn't that amazing? No kidding. It's so amazing, right? Because they were like, we'll be plain, and yet. And yet. And yet. Oh, just give me another six months. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But it's because it really is almost ghosting it. Like, yeah, like it's which a, just makes it even cooler. I know. Ugh. Ugh. Get out. So great. Actually, the, the one quilt, yes. the one quilt that I had anything to do with that uh, our mom and I did um, put together last summer and is only now, only I'm almost ready to take possession of it. It's, it's finally quilted oh, yeah, and ready yeah. to go. Um, it was... Uh, because I enjoy Amish quilts so much, it was the sensibility of it is very Amish. It is. I've seen this quilt. Yeah. I should. It's have got circles, it. but which wouldn't be, but it's still, yeah, that still informed it. I could whip that up during the break. I can yeah. pull that up so we can show it. Yeah. I would love to show it. Okay. Okay. So anyway, so we've we've done threads. I I'll, I, I'll, I look at these. I'll text it to you so you. Can that is what you should do. So anyway, it's it's fantastic. I think Perfect. if you can, and I know it's available through A Books, I recommend getting this. You know what is it? Five dollars or something? I shouldn't say that unless I am right about it. Is that is that right, Cake? Is it like it's cheap on A Books? Yeah, I think right? there's. There's a few copies for five bucks, although I believe some people have been already snapping them up. So. <laughs> that's good. That's good. You should. And look at this. Oh, this is one of my favorite things about oh. Quilt Nerd, Hannah. So this, look at it. It's Taffy Brown, everybody. We just looked at Taffy Brown. This is, she does cyanotype. I was like, wait a second. It's really more of a cyan blue. <laughs> she like, does cyanotype. Taffy Brown. Yeah, yeah, Taffy Brown. It's gotcha. very good. It's very good. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's, well, I don't know what that was. Anyway, no, it's this. Uh, it's a very good joke. Anyway, so we just learned about Taffy Brown, and uh, she has a little article here in Threads, and like that's what happens with quilt nerd is we look at stuff, and then like we really learn yeah. things, and we like go forth and do more looking at things, and we're like, oh, that's Taffy Brown. And so cyanotype. Cyanotype, exactly. Oh, you just texted me your thing. Yeah, I sent you two pictures. Workspaces for Quilting by Mary Mashuda. Anyway, you get the point. And this is the last slide. If you enjoyed this book, you're going to love our magazine. And I did look. Threads is still being published. I'm sure it's changed hands many times. But uh, but that is still happening. Well, so, and yes. also, mm -hmm. if I recall, like both from having read Threads and then also reading their, um, their little media blurb there, mm -hmm. it's like, you know, they embellishment and all that is part of what they do too. Yep. So like, you know, yeah. if you were if you were a quilter who was just like, you know, I'd like to involve beads in my work. Uh, yes. Threads would be an excellent resource for you. You're very good at this. Because part of what is so important about this show, it's like we don't teach you how to do it, but inspiration, man. Like totally. like push the boundaries, like do something different. Like maybe you maybe you want to do photo transfer stuff and you really did not think you were that person or maybe you're like, oh, beads on quilts. If I, I was going to make a quilt myself. Yeah. yeah. Like a baby quilt? Yeah. Well, maybe not a baby quilt, because the baby's going to chew on a quilt. You know, yeah, beads in the baby quilt. Oh, no, 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 baby, but, no beads in the baby quilt. No, no, no. But if I was going to make just like a wall piece or whatever, 
embellish surface embellishment is my jam. That's your thing. Painting on denim, uh, beads, uh, rivets, crystal, mm -hmm. Swarovski, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, all that stuff. You would have dug the thing this morning, the live stream this morning. Go on. Anyway, my quilt would be very sparkly. Oh yeah, very sparkly indeed. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna watch a quick. There's a. There's two videos oh, that blew me away. You. You don't. Hannah doesn't know anything about it. My sister Hannah. Hannah Fonz. Uh, offspring of Marianne Fonz. I'm so glad to be here. I have had the be you're not the milkman's child. Well, I would be the offspring. Look the at offspring us. of Marianne, regardless. <laughs> well, that's well. I hope anyway. I, I so, 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 what we're gonna do is we're gonna watch these two quick videos, and then we're gonna take a quick break, okay. and then we're gonna come back and look at. Oh God. Oh, we're gonna have a discussion <laughs> with Hannah. Um, and you all uh, about something we've talked about on the show before, but we're going to discuss more uh, in depth. Um, You've been so, guessing this video up all day. I know, I know. So Jeff Goldblum gif. Jeff Goldblum. Yes, please. Yes, at any time. Please. Oh, a taffy brown shirt. That's funny, oh, Charles. Word. That's okay. very Charles. That's See very that. funny, Charles. Okay, so here we go. So I found this looking for something else. It's okay. always the way it goes. I was minding my own business Just, yeah. and found this. So right. good. Thank you, PBS. Thank you, PBS. Just in general, thank you, PBS. Well, yeah. So this is uh, my affiliate, WTTW in Illinois. I am a member and donate. You know, if you like the programming on PBS and you have problems with it when it changes, be a member and you get a lot more, they pay a lot more attention to what you have to say. So I found this thing. This so, so what are you doing? Oh, okay. Um, so there's two videos. There's one that's four minutes and 52 seconds. And then there's one that is four minutes and 46 seconds. So we're going to watch this and we are going <laughs> to, what, what are you doing? No, no, What's happening? Just turn. Oh, so we don't have that weird shadow. I oh, good. It. Oh, thank you so much. Okay. All right, so this is from, oh, sorry, let me just see what year this was from. This, uh, this is Betty Kimbrell, a quilt maker from Mount Olive, Alabama, reveals the intimate role that quilting has played in her life and the history of Alabama. Now, I wanted to play this because it's fascinating and she's fascinating, but, but then when you said what you said, Hannah, earlier in the show about what quilts mean, mm -hmm. about what women did with quilts and continue to do with quilts, I was like, yes, it was one of those spooky moments oh. that it's just perfect. So. This is what we do. We explore. One of those. Very good. Thanks. You good? She she learns quick. So this is uh this is this video that I found today and was like we're watching this. Okay. I'll leave the cap closed caption on. Okay. I'm gonna make a smaller. Dulcimer. Love that. Old time. Oh. I just looked at it as been something that would be necessary because I'd grown up with them and I knew it was something that was expected. Uh, see, our minds was not, and I don't want, I don't quite know the right word to use, our minds was not exposed to all of the things that young children are exposed to now. Uh, we actually were more focused on our livelihood and what was going on. So quilting was just as vital as having the corn crop not fighting for us. Oh, I mean, can you, can we I just, mean, quilting was as vital as the corn, corn crop, crop not failing us. Yeah, that's what you eat. Punch it in french fries. Punch it in baked potato. Oh. No, punch it in baked potato. Okay. Punch Amazing, it. right? Punch what? it in stuffed stuff baked potato. It seems a little weird, but it, it really was. No, ma'am, it is not. It was a, a vital part of everyday farm life. There was a sense of pride in in having fine things, and usually those were handmade things. Uh, my I remember my uncle was very good at carpentry. Uh, he made furniture and was always very proud of that in his house. Uh, my grandmother was a stickler for handwork. That's, you know, she taught me to crochet. She taught me to embroidery. I learned to quilt from her. Um, a lot of things, anything that you wanted to ornament in your house, pretty much had to be made, especially in the rural areas. We didn't have, didn't have, didn't have, didn't have, didn't have. so it was handless, handless. The quilt making, prop making, prop making up anything that wasn't big enough to be used for something else. Mm. That's pretty much how it was. Wow, look at her. Wow. Look at that. So whoa, whoa, whoa. Sorry, um, hang on. 
anything that wasn't big enough to be used for something else. Huh. Uh, it's pretty much Cool. Look yeah. at that medallion quilt, right? Amazing. And you can tell Hannah behind her that that's like a, a quilt of its time. It's sort of that polyester batting. Yep. You can see yep, yep, yep. the difference, right? It's it's just really poofy. That's super oh, thank poofy. you. It's it's super poofy. Okay. Wait, hang on. Yavana says quilting is my mental escape and release. I get what she's saying. Uh, you know, Mary Church. <laughs> Mary Church. Yeah. Very good. As Jay Pepper says, spoiler: if the quilt crop if the quilt crop did fail. They actually just quilted corn, and it was equally nutritious. <laughs> Don't make me pull up that picture of Bonnie Persinger and the, the corn quilt. I will have to do it. Damn it. Okay. But also yes. just say yeah, that yeah, the, um, wait, what was my point? My point was that, oh, yeah, as, like, a sewer beater and doer of, like, meticulous, you know, it's so funny, too, because, like, people, look, they'll see something that you make, whether it's quilt or, or, or whatever, you know, beaded piece or something, like, oh, my God, like, how do you have the patience to mm. do all those little dots right. or, like, whatever. They're like, if you had any idea how meditative mm. and, like, flow state, you know, we talk, have you ever talked about flow state when you're in, like, creative? <laughs> I, anyway, I don't, let, let's, let's give her the floor where we can talk about flow state. No, no, it's great. Flow state, but man. What we, one we get it. one person's tedious task is another Cake person's. Cake knows. Cake's like, mm-hmm, flow state. When you're just like, wow, mm -hmm. five hours. I know. I mean, most people have to drink a great deal to lose that much time. <laughs> but no. And you just give not... me a stack of <laughs> bowl of beads and a teeny needle, and I'm just That's oh, right. So that's happy. right. Exactly. Yeah. I want to lose hours like that, not yeah. the other way. Yeah. That's not how I do. And, okay. And they didn't really have a pattern to them so much. Um, it's just strips of fabric sewn together and put together. Oops, sorry. Well, well, now, one thing that all the quotes that we made back then had a cotton batting. That's the, the middle layer. You have your bottom layer, your middle layer, and your top layer. The top layer is where the string part came in. That was usually the patchwork part. The middle layer was cotton that we had grown on the farm. Uh, if you were a cotton farmer, you usually had three peakings. Your first peaking was at the first of, of in the fall of the year. Amazing, the right? nap yeah. on that was longer than the other, so it brought more money. The nap was when they could take the cotton and pull it apart, and, and it would stretch more. Uh, that's how your cotton was graded. And I enjoy the satisfaction of producing something that somebody's going to enjoy. Mm. And quilts are used to commemorate pretty much every phase of life that you can think about. That's right. You have quilts that are made when a new baby's been expected. Mm -hmm. You have quilts, beautiful wow. quilts that are made wow. for I mean, look at this, look at this. Oh, that's how your cotton was great. Okay. And I enjoy the satisfaction I mean, of producing something that somebody's going to enjoy. And quilts are you used this is, to... This is still happening, right? Sure. This has been happening... Right, pretty much every for phase so of life long. that you can think about. You have quilts that are made when a new baby's been expected. Look at that. I mean, that's that's a tent. Oh Buy a quilt. You know, uh, maybe Could, it's a quilt show, whatnot. It's the just, amount of it's, time I spent in such settings as a small child. I, right? Hi, like, hiding between the quilt yes! and like, the wall oh of the God. thing. And just being like, don't talk to me. And, like, I, hanging out with my He-Man and carrot God, figures and leave me like. God bless all the, the only children. It's all good. You know, like, God. whatever your experience in life is, like, thumbs up, man. But I got to say, to have a sibling who knows... Like, I know what you're talking about, man. Yeah. Like, to go to the art center and, like, be waiting while mom bases a quilt with Liz Porter, and you're just like, I'm dead. Like, I I, I, I see you. I mean, like, it's our familiar, good. wait, 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 because I don't want to hijack this, but yeah, also yeah, to, yeah. like, you know, big ups to church basements. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> and, um, and also, too, like, I love to shop for, fa for fa fabric now. And of course, I have like the New York City garment district at my disposal, so I go to like you know like Thirty Seventh Street. It's just like la. It's like, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But um, but as a child, like going to the fabric store, Sofro Fabrics. Yeah. Check that on me on that mom because Sofro Fabrics, and I believe Des Moines. Yeah. I hope mom's still there. Sometimes she gets like, I have to go do laundry. I'm like, oh, don't let me stop you. <laughs> don't. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. So, but but being taken to shop for fabric as a child was uh, just. Can you plug in? I my sure phone? can. You're oh, right. Anyway, so good. please go ahead. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, and by the way, Dee Dee, um, I saw you asking, and, st and Cake has been great about letting people know. But if you if you missed the uh, the announcement, we 
I, I think is a very good change. We changed the, the Twitch channel name to Quilt Nerd Show from Yo Mary Fonz. Uh, I didn't have a name for the show when we first started this a year ago. And so uh, we recently changed it to Quilt Nerd Show. All of the Yo Mary Fonz links and stuff will still come here. But, uh, but for all the emotes that all the subscribers are going to be using uh, and have been using, usually the prefix was Yo Mary, and then you could type in your emote. Um, but now it's Quilt Nerd. So if you type in that instead, and Cake, you've been doing a great job of letting people know, but I thought I'd just do that while, while uh, we pause this. But no, let's finish this, so just about a minute, so just about a minute left, and then we'll look at the technique that she uses that I have never seen before, that blows me away. Oh my God, okay, okay. Those beautiful quilts that are made for wedding presents. You have quilts that are made, that are called morning quilts, M-O-U-R-E-M-I-N-G quilts. Those quilts are made from leftover remnants of the, the deceased's clothing, uh, or maybe just something, uh, say the, the deceased could be a male person and he enjoyed fishing, it may be a quilt about fishing. Aww, about this, this process fishing is quilt. used sometimes to help the grieving person yes, to heal. Yes, that's right. they've lost a loved one or something. And then they can wrap Quilts themselves are, up uh, in their, uh, uh, the departed, well, like, of course, holy cow. Writes, uh, mm. depicts or puts in history all of our uh, special events. Uh, after 9-11, the market oh was flooded with mm. all kind of ideas that would do that. Love we her. have Civil War okay. quilts. Mm -hmm. We have the uh, Underground Railroad quilts. Mm -hmm. Here in Alabama, we have one that is my all-time favorite called oh. Gunboat Quilt. Oh, yes. Oh. The Gunboat Quilt? The gun oh, yeah, the Gunboat Quilt. Now, that's not a Gunboat Quilt. That's this a stained glass quilt. Right, right, right. But the Gunboat Quilt is very interesting. It's okay. a story. It's a whole thing. Okay. These quilts were made in the during the She's Civil say. War. Because the southern ladies wanted to have, we needed a gunboat to defend the Gulf, to keep um, our goods coming into the U.S. because they were blocking all the ports. The and so they got together and was making rifling quilts to help build this gunboat, I mean to help build this fund to buy gunboats with. These quilts that the museum have is absolutely fabulous. The workmanship in them is just unreal. They're made out of satins and uh, uh, taffetas, fabric that was not available in this part of the country during the Civil War. Hmm. There's not Did they cut up their any dresses? way that I can think oh, of yeah. they cut up their ball gowns. look at, at American history and not find a quilt that was created for that purpose. Oh. Now, what other art form does that? Thank not, you, God! No, not a damn is. one. I, I like getting that. Yes, oh, Hannah, do you see? It's totally. Like when I she totally she totally reiterated what I said earlier. Yeah, yes. exactly. She oh. she there there it doesn't get better than that, and that's, that's why really like cool. you know when I got into the quilt thing, I was like doing the industry, I was like doing the quilt stuff, I was mm. making quilts. If, if that was all I was doing, I just wouldn't be here. It's that. It's that. It's American history. It's people. It's women. It's it's art, and it's like it's humanity, man. That's what I love about this. If yeah. I get to explore, I get to meet her. Yeah, yeah. I get to meet that lady, mm -hmm. and she's great. Now let's take before we do our break one more quick video. Sure. You guys, this because we can talk all night about this stuff, and sure. that's why that's hosting the show is hard because we could talk all night, right? Um, and by the way, uh, Stephanie points out, boo on Twitch. It appears to be case sensitive. That is the worst. Uh, what is great is what Scrapitude said, which was um, she quoted the lady, the Civil War, Whoa. Whoa. the Civil War. Yes, that I could listen to that accent all day. Bip, Bip, hello, Bip. It's so good to see you. Wait, oh no, no. Bip Palumbo um, says she speaks for all of us. Indeed, mm, the lady so. does, quite Betty. So. so check this out. You're all, y'all gonna flip out. Here we go. Okay. Yeah, the war of northern aggression. Indeed. Okay. Okay. <laughs> A great deal of the fabric oh, used in the remark. farm came from feed and fertilizer sacks. Back then, your fertilizer, as we called it, ganner, came in 100-pound bags, which was about a yard of good fabric. And this fabric must have had a little iron in it or something because it never wore out. It would just get whiter and prettier the more you washed it. Uh, it was used for virtually everything. We used it to make linens out of. We used huh. it for linens in the kitchen. We used it for hand towels. Uh, we used it to make sheets for the bed. We used it to make underwear. We used that white product for everything. We saved the, the thread 
that those sacks were sewn together on a commercial machine. Okay. If you pull the right string, you could unravel the whole oh, thing. We saved all that thread and used it in um, crochet. That's what I learned to crochet with. Uh, we also Amazing. used it in a lot of our handwork. God, too. The amount of labor so, to and, even um, get supplies to do more labor. I don't think <laughs> yeah. Anybody no. that was born and lived through the Depression and soon after those years would really be very disturbed with America and the throwaway attitude we have today. Europe. Europe. <laughs> That's right? use of Europe. Right? Well, fine, but okay, okay, okay. this, so, this, this. I can't. What are we doing, Betty? What are, <laughs> what are you showing me, Betty? What are you, what are you, just, where are you taking us? Just. She's swishing grass. Shh. Yes, she is. No, it's good. We have to make it transformative, okay. otherwise it'll be a copyright strike. Okay. So, she's go. Squ she's squishing grass. She's squishing grass. She's Oh, wooden, so wooden, so wooden. Grand, grand. Came out of their high chair, out of their high chair, out their high Leaf pounding works better on a wooden surface. Oh, if I don't want to carry my stool with me, I use my very well used cutting board. Ah. And <gasps> since I'm not into being symmetrical, I just find something that I like. Lay it down. And I lay not it face symmetry. down. No that is a gambler. Reason. It's just that sometimes if you lay them up like this, they want to kind of go crazy for you. <laughs> and I found out if you lay them down flat. Look at what she's doing. With face it. down, they do a little better. Now, what I have is masking tape. It's uh, probably an inch and a half. I usually use two inch, but uh, they didn't have it when I bought this. And if the leaf is uh, literally a dandelion, a little leaf. bit out yeah. of control, and yeah. I'll bend this one just a little bit to give it a different look, I'll do what I call tape basting. I'll go in here and kind of baste it into the shape that I want it to be. And then I'm going to cover the whole thing in so tape. Covering in tape. Yeah. You see how well it's look at um, that. absorbing the chlorophyll? Let me show you. You see, none of it goes off onto the base fabric because uh, the tape keeps it from that. So the tape serves two purposes. It holds your leaf in place and helps to push the chlorophyll into the <laughs> to the leaf. When you start to pound the leaf, you need to have enough time to finish it because it will dry up mm -hmm. if you if you leave it unattended. You could superimpose another leaf over it, but I just have to pause because everybody's like, OMG, about Lou, but also about this technique. I mean, Myra says, I, amazing, I did botanical, yeah, yeah, sure. He's a little stinky today. I mean, maybe, it's hot. It's, it is hot, okay. Uh, and he lives in New York City. I mean, come on. Um, it's, it's a gritty place. So, so Myra says, amazing, I did botanical printing on paper and canvas with paint and rubber brayer in the mid-90s, but this is amazing with a hammer out of sight. I know. Right. Um, S.J. Pepper is very excited about Lou. Quapa Cat, you, you made a comment earlier about about your relatives and someone said something about the next show you know this is why cake I, I so appreciate you you know anything that I miss like like it's not to say that you're gonna catch everything but you know if somebody you know it, Quack Quack Cat if you said something about uh, you know I'll find a photo for the discord okay I, I just want you to know I'm, I'm looking at the chat I'm trying to do a bunch of things but uh, I know that a lot of people are having um, uh, responses about their own family and yeah. stuff like that so we do our best, and 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 it's it's so interesting. The the chat tonight, particularly, uh, full of interesting uh, comments. Um, yeah, people, you know, quilting politics, as my family called uh, it, the war of northern aggression, and yeah, quack quack cat. Oh my God, that's what that's what I have. It's my great grandfather's morning quilt. So so anyway, uh, I'm seeing all of it. Mom says washed. Yeah, washed. <laughs> um, anyway, so so how cool is this, right? Um, uh, uh, so great and there's there's about a minute left Jay Dancer thank you for subscribing with Prime you subscribe for nine months that's amazing that's almost as long as we've been doing the show uh, mind blown right so good everybody's into it yeah. um, wait the other Mary Kate oh my god so Mary Kate worked at Quilter's Newsletter yeah. and, and she says I knew her name sounded familiar we did a tutorial on her leaf pounding technique in Quilter's Newsletter so, okay, of so, course you did do you know can you find so wait, when is this her leaf pounding technique, or is well, this something well, that she has? Well, here's the thing: is it's listed as Cherokee, okay. Cherokee leaf pounding technique. Okay. I don't know what that's about. I haven't investigated. I found this, and I was like, "Ooh, we're watching this." I mean, it would be regionally correct. And by the way, Yavana says, "I learned this as a child. Very cool, beautiful. That's awesome." 
Amazing. Okay, so let's okay. just see her finish this. Ivana, you learned this as a child? That's so cool. Holy cow, yeah. Huh. Wow, okay, huh. okay. The likelihood of the veins and everything matching up is not real great. And you never know how much color you're going to get. I've been very careful in selecting hey, really? certain leaves to be sure I was getting two leaves from the same branch that was probably the same age. Oh, wow. I'm thinking I'd get the same amount of chlorophyll in them or something like yeah. that. It doesn't so work. Cool. It just, it, it just, everything's a surprise in this. Surprise. So if you're a uh, control uh, freak. freak or somebody that has to be sure you know what you're going to get, you might not want to take up leaf pain in this This is fun for kids to do. Oh, yeah. Uh, Yvonne. Uh, you Ivana just have to it? be careful and not continue to pound in one place very long because you will mess your fabric up. The chlorophyll is from nature. It's a natural dye, and you need a natural That's fiber amazing. to take the natural dye. Oh, good point. Wow. So don't be trying this with nylon. Right. There's some sort of symbolism in that. But... Mary Kate says she was credited as the teacher of this technique. That, that this, this blew me away, y'all. So neat. Oh, because we looked at art quilts today that had a lot of, a lot of, you know, of this very interesting techniques with, with, with chemicals and things, which is like totally, I mean, I'm like, oh, great. Like use, use, you know, better living with chemistry, um, to make your stuff. But this is a very interesting, fully organic way to do stuff. So, um, Hannah, I, let's take a quick break. Okay. I want to come back and do a little discussion. Uh, that, that it's, it's such an enjoyable night. Um, and we've got, you know, we usually run about two hours, yeah. you know, and we've been, we've been about an hour and a half. So we're going to come back and do a little bit more talk because we have you. And I would like to see Lou a little bit more close up folks like, like Lou. They do. They do like Lou. No, Lord have mercy. He he didn't, didn't, get, it's like we keep catching him. Like he's so lively. And he like, is lively. He just lively. looks kind of like he just. He's like I don't really care for this. Why am I here? And I'm I just, gonna. No, oh he's God. he's so sweet. He's just oh so God. sweet. Like, he was camera shy today. He's camera shy now. Look at him. He's turning away. He's like, oh, no, I'm you're not shy. This little this little scamp oh slept with me all night. Yeah, you gotta see Mary. Here, I'm telling you. I had a friend. You're letting him go? I'm not, okay. He's hopping down. All right, he's hopping down. OK, everybody, we are going to take a quick break. Cake, are you good to do a uh, do a cake break? Sure. OK, all right. I am going to change, and we, uh, well, I'm going to change the screen. And uh, Stephanie Cake is going to uh, come in, do, do what Stephanie Cake does, which is like basically keep this thing from being a total crack up. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay, so we will be right back to uh, do a little bit more with Hannah on this uh, anniversary week show here on Quilt Nerd. We hope you will stick around, and uh, yeah, we'll be right back. back. Okay, cool. Sure. It's a hot mic. Oh, we're still on screen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's a hot mic. Okay. Oh, am I unmuted here? Okay. So, guys, I uh, Mary asked me to cover a couple things, and um, I think she might have already covered them a little bit. But um, just wanted to, there, I think there's probably a little bit of confusion about the emotes. And um, again, Mary had to change the name of the emotes from Yo Mary Whatever to Quilt N. And um, <laughs> SJ Pepper. <laughs> So you want to you want to type quilt n and it is case sensitive so uh, no no uh, no capital letters so that's quilt letter n it's the right way unless you've got a backwards n on your keyboard and then whatever the emote name was that you're used to using um, I personally prefer to um, just hit the little uh, little emote face that's in the corner of the chat um, I'm pretty sure that's on mobile devices too. So um, that might be a shortcut for those of you that are that are struggling with that. So um, what else did I want to cover? So uh, exciting. We are going to have a drawing today and I think there are a couple more this week. So uh, definitely try to watch these. I know, you know, we've got some folks that are on the other side of the world during the usual broadcast. Um, so Mary is going to maybe do it, be doing a few things for them um, so that they can have a chance to be here live this week for the anniversary shows. Um, 
I have to stop for a minute. Hannah mentioned Sofro, and I don't know if uh, Sofro was a national chain. I, you know, I grew up in Virginia, and it was like my mom's weekly destination. And I remember hiding in the middle of the the, uh, the fabric bolt racks. They were just big enough for a small child. Um, and I remember it being just literally the worst time of my life outside of maybe Sunday school. <laughs> and, I would do anything to go back to those days, right? You know, the, just to be able to like be in a nice, dimly lit fabric store, just feeling all the fabric <laughs> for hours. It's great. But um, yeah, that was a, a blast from the past for me for a minute. I hadn't thought about Sofro in decades. Let's see. So, what else do we have to talk about? I've been scrolling through um, the chat and I know a couple people had some buffering issues and I know if you were on the uh, the check center broadcast this morning I know we, in particular we had a, a little bit of buffering issues um, and as somebody mentioned they didn't want to lower the quality of their their video and I, I totally understand that but um, if you kind of get into that little annoying buffering thing, you can, um, there's a little settings thing. You may have to tap or hover the actual video screen. Um, and there's a little, it's like a gear icon. And so when you click that, it, it has a video quality option and you can change that, just drop it down. And usually that kind of fixes things. So um, just a suggestion there, you know, and, and I get it, you know, nobody wants to look at blurry quilts, but <laughs> sometimes it helps a little bit, you know, just to get you over that buffering hump. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention, we, um, Susanna and I were talking today, and I know it's challenging for everybody, um, but subscriptions, particularly when you're doing the prime rodeo, I think somebody had mentioned that today, having to, you know, jump through hoops for that. Um, but it really works the best on, you know, on a laptop or a desktop. Um, I know especially our community um, kind of runs their life on iPads and mobile devices and phones. I know, um, you know, before I, I jumped in to help Mary with this production stuff, I was watching on my phone, so totally get it. Um, but when you go to, to uh, resubscribe, it's, it's often good to get on a laptop if you can. Um, so yeah, yeah, Bridgewater, Virginia, Sofro, Hancock, Minnesota Fabrics, yeah, and they're all gone now, right? <laughs> There's, I think, I want to say Hancock was in, um, Hancock Fabrics was in where the town I grew up in until maybe I was in high school or college. I can't remember. Um, but yeah, they all those, those fabric stores are gone now. And, and uh, I really don't know what, what they have, you know, internationally. <laughs> I always, you know, this is terrible when I've traveled. I'm probably the worst person to actually go and see things that would be make me happy which is going to fabric stores and quilt shops and stuff so i'm not sure i'm not sure about international stores but i know like here in the u.s I, gosh we've got joanne fabrics and that's about it who what other fabrics can you think fabric stores can you think of that are like big chain ones um i'm just drawing a complete blank on anything that's out there hobby lobby maybe they have, they sell some fabric um N not to squash anybody's um, um, economical fabric purchases, but I know Walmart has fabric. It's terrible, but Walmart has fabric. Um, yeah, I felt like Sweet says Hobby Lobby. Yeah. Okay, so they, there's still some Hancock stores. Yeah, Joanne. Yeah, Joanne. Actually, I took a little. I took a little part-time job at Joanne a while back when I was freelancing, just to kind of get a little extra money over the holidays and. Um, yeah, it, from the inside out, it was just as bad as the outside in. <laughs> so, um, oh, Michaels is carrying fabrics. Okay, I didn't know that. That quarters. Okay. Oh, yeah. It sounds like everybody kind of has the same feelings about those big chain stores, but you know, I was, I try to support the local quilt shops, um, you know, when I can, and and there's a lot that have closed down in my area in Maryland, but, um, you know, I do a lot of mail order with the smaller, the smaller shops. I think somebody had mentioned fat quarter shop earlier. Um, or maybe that was on this morning stream. I can't remember, but they're a really great, uh, shop in Texas and, um, pretty big. They sell like every fabric line you can think of. Um, but they are a, uh, like a homegrown <coughs> woman owned business. So, um, 
pretty sweet. Ah, uh, and Sushan worked at Joanne's too. Okay, I, think I probably should. I'm uh, <laughs> I'm probably gonna start in on stuff that Mary does not want on the show. It just like bitten hey. about Joanne. <laughs> hey man, you know, I mean, you know what? Well, it's never funny. mind that sponsorship. We, we should, t- yeah, exactly. <laughs> we should talk about Joanne's. We should talk about Michaels. You know, I mean, like quilt nerd. You know, we we have no fear, right? Like, let's talk about what that means and what it means for quilt shops and stuff. And like, that's pretty interesting, actually. Um, and we went to Ben Franklin. You know, mom went yep. to Ben Franklin. Five and nine. Still, still there. Yeah, yeah. Right? It's still there. Um, yeah. so oh, that's right. There is that. You still have that Ben Franklin in Iowa, yeah. like in your town, the town yep. you grew up in? Yes. Yes. Yeah. We, there was a little Ben Franklin where I, I grew up in Fredericksburg, Virginia, and ah. uh, there was a little Ben Franklin there that really just became entirely arts and crafts stuff. Um, mm. I think they went out of business or they, they whatever, they whatever happened to them uh, when I was in college. So, like, mid 90s. Interesting. Interesting. Speaking of where to buy yeah. fabrics, you know, mm-hmm. I was bragging about having the garment district in New York at my disposal. Mm-hmm. When I was, when our mom and I were. Thank you, Stephanie. Ha- You're amazing. Oh. Thank you. Okay. Sorry. Would we hatch the plot to make our quilt that I that can show pictures oh, of later? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. You know, I went to I went to Mood Fabric, which is like you know the 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 great temple of fabric. Like, if you ever watched um, Project Runway... Oh, yeah, Mood. They would go to Mood, right? Mm-hmm. Tim Gunn would send them to Mood, and they would go to Mood. And so, um, so I was like... Thank oh, you, right. Mood. Thank yeah. you, Mood. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it is truly, it's truly everything that's cracked up to be. It's, it's wonderful. It's amazing. But and the, it's in L.A., too. Yeah. But the thing is, is it's not... This is not a quilting fabric. No. This is a garment fabric mm-hmm. thing. Uh, emporium. So like, so when I went and I'm picking fabrics that I love, I'm like, this does not feel like quilting cotton. I'm like, then what is quilting cotton? And then I was like, does it need to be? And so no, I, no. I texted our mom and I was like, listen, all of this stuff that I'm finding is like, you know, it's got sort of a, I mean, it's all cotton, but it was like some of it had a sheen and some of it was thicker and some of it had had a metallic element to it. And this, and it was meant not meant for, for quilting. It was meant for garments, you know? And, um, and I, I, I know enough about, I went to FIT for a while and have done garment construction, so I know enough to know that it's like, it's not impossible, but real hard to get like two wildly different weights yeah. of fabric to play well together. It's hashtag just, stabilizer, hashtag yeah, tears. Right, yeah. all right. So, so I you know, knew enough to not go wildly mm-hmm. in both directions and try and make that work. Mm-hmm. I was gonna do like a corduroy and a tool, like that would mm-hmm. But um, we managed to pull off a very handsome, and I don't think, I mean, mom handled most of the technical, really, really technical stuff mm-hmm. on the things. And I don't think it, I mean, she didn't text me in a rage about like, <laughs> what have you, what have you set us up for? Um, the, mm-hmm. That was the first mm-hmm. 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 Um, Sorry. Go on. But, uh, but yeah, so I mean, you know, it's, I guess along with it is like, it's not, if someone ever told you that you can't use you know, or that you have to use like fabric specifically made for quilting. You well can do definitely. Other oh yeah, I mean, talk to the. Yeah, I mean, the, um, crazy quilts and. Oh uh, well, yeah. I mean, there's so many velvet mixed. Oh with, yeah, yeah, and yeah, a lot of the but, everyday quilts. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Hang on, hang on. This is Hannah's quilt. Oh. A, a lot of the you know everyday quilts that we've seen. Uh, hey, there's Lou. And Lou. Lou. He's sleeping. He's not. Just uh, sleeping. He's he is camera shy. He is. So this is up at the at the island, and this mm-hmm. is Hannah's quilt. So so you and Mom made this together, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. This is so cool. And so, what are the different fabrics in it? Do you I know? I mean, yeah, Sateen? yeah. Sateen. There's yes, and then um, well, wait, is that is that just describing the? Because the, there's the it's, all cotton. it's all cotton. It's all cotton. Okay, great, 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 yeah. great, great, great. It's cotton with different finishes, obviously. Right. There's, I mean, that's not that looks mad shiny, but it's not really that shiny in real life. This looks. What is this? What kind of cotton? Is this? <laughs> that is that is known as a, that's a uh, bias cut Shawini. Oh, <laughs> this is so cool, yeah. man! I love it. I mean, I saw you when you were taking this picture because I was up there, but like, it's great to see it. And let's take a look at a little bit closer too. We'll look at the whole thing. This is so great. Oh. Did Lou Ann Downs quilt it? She does a lot of yes. uh, quilting. Yeah, I think I yes. think so. Yes. I think so. It's fabulous. Mm-hmm. On my uh, instruction. I with love the it. Rays, yeah, 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 it's great. Yep. Um, Ivana loves the quilting. Hannah, great job. Oh, thanks. And um, <laughs> Core Quilts is like, what's going on with my keyboard? A million typos. 
Same. It happens to oh, mom, everybody. Mom says it was pretty tricky oh. quilt sewing because of the different weights. Because of the different yes. weights. Yep. Amazing See? quilting designed by Hannah by Luann Down's mom. That's right. totally right. I'm so glad. She does a lot of mom's quilts. Yep. She did many of mine uh, in uh, in Iowa. Mm -hmm. So if you need a long armor, we recommend yes. Luann Downs. Yeah. That is not a paid uh, sponsorship. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a, a good a good tip. But we mm -hmm. also, actually, you, Luann Downs is great, but Yavana is a quilt cool nerd. And she does long arming. And so we recommend Yavana first. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's so cool, right? So, so Saucy Stitcher loves it. Everybody's into it. Quilting Politic and Sujan, everybody's into it. Little Bird Stitch, Bridgewater. Uh, we uh, appreciate that. For, you did a great job. Further information, because of the different weights, it would have been very difficult if the pieces had been small. Ah, but it worked because the pieces were not, were large. Yes. Well, and also, oh, I had that in mind. Anne Ayler? Anne Ayler's? Anne Ayler's? Hi, Anne Ayler's. Are you Anne Ayler's of Iowa City? Look, I went to school with Ann Ehlers. I mean, she probably came to a party, well, definitely in my apartment, maybe your apartment. It could be, Ann Ehlers could be someone else, but whoever you are, Ann Ehlers. Ann Ehlers Iowa City? I am glad Chime in. that you are Identify here. yourself. And, no, you know, don't put them on the spot. You don't no, have no, to. of course I'm sorry. And, and anybody who's watching the show can be in the lurker lounge. You don't ever have to chat. You don't ever have to do that. You know, you don't want to put people on the spot. Okay. But it's great that you're here. And uh, theater department, man. That was a good time. Okay, so so this is very brief, and then we're gonna have a conversation. Like I said, uh, we'll see you know where it goes, but I want to touch on something that we talked about earlier today. But uh, but before uh, when we were looking at the threads, yeah, we were looking at this Threads magazine uh, book. Where did it go? Uh, and we looked at the, uh, the one of the pages had the Judith uh, here, um, Judith uh, Larzalere quilt. Well, uh, in in the piece in the uh, in the article, and it was interesting because I thought, oh yes, it, it's uh, it's so deliciously beautiful. Mm -hmm. And and I, I there's also another quilt maker, Linda McDonald, who we haven't actually looked at, who is still active, still doing things. But in the 1980s, it was really in 90s was really um, active in the art quilt movement and really changing. I mean, Hannah, when you look at I mean, with this kind of thing, we grew up around sort of seeing this kind of thing. I mean, yeah. there's the art quilts, right? But what they were doing with the mm. medium, when you compare it to what was happening, I mean, in the 60s, people were getting into cool stuff, but like compare it to like 1910, you know, quilts did oh. not look like this. No. They did not look like this. No. They didn't look like this in the 40s. They didn't look like, you know, they didn't. They didn't. They didn't look like this in the 40s. In the 60s, you start getting weird, some weird interesting quilts, stuff. Weird, weird quilts yeah. of that, those eras you're talking about were weird. But they didn't look like that. Correct. They were weird in the it, you, of you've the time. shown some weird quilts. Oh. The shows that I've been on, you've oh. shown some weird quilts that were like, I cannot believe that that oh, was yeah. made in you oh, know, yeah. 1912 yeah. or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they didn't, not, not because they looked like this. And Ann Ehlers is my friend uh -huh. from the theater department. Oh, God, you're going to make me cry. Ann, girl, how are you doing? <laughs> you're on Twitch. You need tissue? I <laughs> might. Oh, my God. I hope not it I makes me, it, it actually, See? okay. <laughs> it actually makes me, it's like I'm thrown back, I'm listening to Madonna's music album, I'm I'm in that apartment, we had great parties, did we not? I mean, come on, let's just, let's just. <laughs> um, anyway, and it's really good to see you. I will, I, I gotta keep on with the show, but I'm very glad you're here and you're great. Um, anyway, so so uh, Lauren Kroon, by the way, subscribed uh, at tier one. Thank you so much, Lauren. Uh, and you've subscribed for nine months. That is so cool. That is really great. Uh, and Lauren says, I can't believe this show's been rocking for almost a year. Is there going to be a big show for the first year anniversary? I am glad you asked. Indeed, this Friday. So there's a there's a bonus show on Thursday morning at 9 a.m. Central uh, for the folks who can't make the evening show. You know, I really, really miss the folks who can't make the evening show who have to watch the playback. So 9 a.m. Central Time on Thursday uh, is going to be that bonus show. And then Friday night, uh, August 5th at 7 p.m. Central, uh, we're going to do a, an anniversary show. And the reason that we're going to do it Friday night instead of Saturday is because Saturday is August 6th, and that's my birthday. birthday. Yeah, and Eric's going to take me out, and it's sort of like, oh. I don't know. I kind of I kind of feel like that day should be a day... Oh my God, now I'm going to cry. Anne's here and everybody's here. This has been really like awesome. Yes. It's been like awesome and hard Mother. and great. <laughs> like, I love doing this so much. Oh and it's God. like, Give okay, like maybe on my birthday, like I should just like 
rest, like on the Lord's just Day. Like, <laughs> trying to get you a hanky. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> There's an avocado on the screen. Kiwi Kathy is committed to con continue their gift subscription. I've never and seen that before. It was the Lord. It was the. It was the Lord. And Eilers was at the parties at my house, in which case <laughs> I probably owe you an apology. <laughs> Woo! Scoot over here so yeah. we can. Yeah. Um, okay. So there's a lot going on. <laughs> Quilt tops by Ivana. Thank you. Thank you, Ivana. You've been here from the start, and I appreciate you. And Listen, if you want to see some crack ups and some, some crying and some. But not too I won't trauma dump on you, don't worry. But on Friday, it's going to be a good time. I'm going to wear a pretty dress, you know? Oh. We're going to have some fun. So, and we're going to do a giveaway tonight, by the way. In a very short amount of time, we are going to do a giveaway. Uh, Stephanie Cake will be drawing a name for some prizes from the Iowa Coat Museum. Mom, you helped pick these prizes. And so we'll, let's get onto this last part before uh, we do that giveaway. Uh, you uh, you all are, uh, Kiwi Kathy, uh, it's Wednesday over here. She's in New Zealand. She oh, says, it's, it's hi, a, hi from the future, it's Wednesday. Totally, I was like, the, the Kiwis have entered the chat. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> and Rocket Dog, by the way, says earmuffs for mom, because mom still is watching the show, and we are talking about parties in college. Oh, whatever. She knows all about it. So, yeah, she does. So, so, but not everything. Okay, I mean, um, um, so, so this is... Stretch your limitations. Way indeed. Stuff. So then, so, so this is a photographer's work, and her, photo her work, so she's actually from Chicago, this photographer, mm. but her name is... Da -da 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 -da. Uh, Angie Mc, McMonagall, okay, M-C-M-O-N-I-G-A-L, uh, McMonagall. Mm -hmm. And when I was looking, I forget what I was looking up, but, but she was in an article that was describing her work as pa patchwork, you know, pixelated mm -hmm. pictures of cities. And that, that her, the way she photographed, and this is New York. Yeah, okay, yeah. So this is I all like, the building. Yeah, okay, downtown, so, so this is, district. Okay, so this is New York, and and Angie photographs cities. She started with Chicago, but now she's done New York, and she photographs these cities in this particular way that makes them very patchworky, right? And when I read that, I was like, oh, oh, I know what you mean, because Linda McDonald, to me, yeah. is doing the same thing, but she, she was doing this in the 80s, but yeah. when I look at her work, when I saw this, uh -huh. I was like, oh, oh, patchwork, pixels, Linda McDonald. I mean, this kind, the angles that she's using, right. and this is Angie McDon McMonagall, again, uh, photographer Chicago, who, by the way, says, um, I'm a fine art and commercial architect commercial architecture photographer based in Chicago, striving to bring a detailed, thoughtful perspective to my work, whether for clients or through the workshops I lead. Having grown up surrounded by nature, yet fascinated by the big city I've called same. home for more than two decades, same, I bring the meditative calm of my upbringing to a terrain that's always transforming. Drawing from my education in the micro sciences, cool, okay. Malek, I didn't a see A lady in this. STEM, we love it. Exactly, this is a exploration this show not a presentation i'm yeah. learning this with them yeah, right? like I, oh yeah. my god microsciences molecular biology microbiology virology how cool is she pretty cool um my focus is more frequently on bold architecture details rather than sweeping cityscapes mm. oh it's quilt way to oh, juxtapose thank you <laughs> thank you rather than sweeping cityscapes um, creating images. Now, real quick, real quick. So just so you know, this is a, ph a photograph. I, I hope that by mixing these images of a quilt by Linda McDonald and a photograph, an actual photograph uh, by Angie McMonagall, I don't want to, uh, what I'm trying to do is sort of compare, but I don't want to miss, um, misinform people. Right, this right. is a photograph, right? right? Of this an actual city. Correct, correct, of an actual city. And then, you know, this, hold on now. Oh yeah, then, then this is a quilt by Linda McDonald, uh, made in 1989. But when I look at the work of Linda McDonald, I see a similarity because of the angles and the just the, the, the cuts, the, the long yeah, skinny sure. pieces, right? And sort of to the and this with like sort of the suggestion or impression of light play. Um, yes, it, yes. Yeah, I mean it's 
it it's, it has the same sort of shimmering quality as like looking at a close up of a skyline. Yes. That's not a, like that's not a skyline. Exactly. Exactly. It I, also totally reminds me of Inception and the Doctor Strange yeah, movies. Yeah. 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 Totally. Exactly. Exactly. The multiverse of madness. But when you you know looking at at, at these kinds of photos, to me, they they and and the reason I found them. Especially cool. Yeah, the way, and it's all New York, right? Mm-hmm. So this is a, cause she's a photographer in Chicago, but she was doing New York. And so when I'm Ooh, thinking, right, nice. I'm thinking about Judith mm-hmm. uh, and seeing those photos, I was like, well, well, there's a relationship here. So I might have, uh, yeah. might have sort of not explained that as well as I could have. I don't want to, didn't want to leave people to think that like, those photographs were quilts, but the, yeah. this is a quilt and there's a relationship to me between this and this. Oh, uh, yeah. You know what there, I mean? There's an aesthetic thread through line, I think. Yeah, yeah. It's, well, it's also kind of like, um, it puts me in mind of like, you know, when Piet Mondrian did his jazz series, mm-hmm. like Broadway Boogie Woogie and mm-hmm. like all that. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's, you know, he was a minimalist, mm-hmm. impressionist painter. Totally. And his stuff kind of looks like, it looks like city streets with, you know, with car lights and stop lights and whatever. And like, you can, mm-hmm. yeah. It, And to me, this, this has got to be, I mean, it could be a, it could be desert inspired, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like rock mm-hmm. formations and stuff. But to me, this seems urban, probably because you already showed urban shots. So that's what I'm primed for. Yeah, right. I right. could see the artist being like, no, this is totally from like Joshua Tree Park. And I'm like, <laughs> right. sorry. <laughs> and by the way, Tover says, ooh, light play, kinky, ridiculous. And SJ says, this is actually a quiz. Let's show Hannah something and then ask her, is this a quilt or a building? <laughs> is this a quilt or a building? I love it. You know what? People are so creative and ridiculous with like photo transfer. I know. You know what? I would I'll, what I would do, only because it's legal and I don't break the law. What? I would have a huge blunt and I would be like, Oh okay, my now tell god! Me. And I'd be like, Shh, No. Building. No, no. Oh my god. I'd be like. <laughs> I don't. You know what? You know what? You know what? I would be a terrible influence on your you know entire show. You know it's good funny? this is a limited run. It really you is. You know what? Here's what, I, here's what I do. I look at Stephanie Cake. I look over at the monitor. And she's and just I a check long in. suffering. I check in with her. And if she's laughing at these hijinks, I'm like, it's okay. fine. But I mean, I didn't catch. I mean, you just said, you just said, you made a drug for everybody's. Good it's, heavenly days. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We have a first time chat. Weed. We have a first time chat. Oh, oh gosh. God. I'm so sorry. You just look, got here. Look, oh, no. First time chat. So that's like long time listener, first time caller. Well, we don't know. Okay. But all we do know is this person's name is delightful and delovely. Sweet Peas and Taters. And so Sweet Peas and Taters <laughs> has shown up with this amazing name and a first time chat. And she shows up. Or he. Shows up okay. and you're and you're goofing off about the about the. Uh, well, the I can tell you right now, me sweet peas and taters is a is an expression of disbelief going forward. Can you read? Can you please read sweet peas and taters? You have the uh, the uh, opportunity here to have your first chat read by my sister Hannah, <laughs> my mother's first born first born child. And what does sweet peas and taters? I can't believe I just found this channel this week. Thanks for all the neat quilts and information that you share. It's, I've been a quilter for several years and I always love learning more about quilting history and different right. techniques. Oh. Well, there you go. And now. We're sitting in the East Village talking about weed. <laughs> I've worked so hard. Listen, sweet And going pe- forward, and if everybody says yes. something unbelievable, I'm like, sweet peas and taters. Yeah, <laughs> well, sweet peas, peas and taters. taters. I'm um, dipped. That is, that is really good. Yeah. Um, sweet peas and taters, all those welcome baskets there in the chat are for you. We're glad you're here. Absolutely. Um, Hannah, you are so funny. Everybody is, <laughs> we love, they love Hannah. You love Hannah. You know what? You know, I told, I told Mary before we even started this, I'm like, Susan, I'm glad you're sticking in there. Yeah. <laughs> like, I want to do a little breakout, like like Cake's Cake does, and just call oh, yeah. it the Cussin' Quilter. Do, we, do I talk the, about this already? Yes, you did. Oh, yeah. Cussin' Quilter. That's it. Yeah, all I'm going to do is rip out stitches and cuss the whole time. I'm going to be like, damn it, and just rip out thing, rip out mistakes. Here, Here's what I have to say. All right, so the last segment tonight, because oh. Lord knows <laughs> yeah. y'all have things to do. Uh, sweet peas, I'm glad you're here. We have Kenny. Kenny, thank you for subscribing at Tier Two. I don't do months, but I support him. Thank you. Oh, can you're we stop hurt. saying months on the show? You know Jazz what? I cigarettes. Actually, you know what? Cake, cake. We, oh, I actually have to check because you know the, the TOS terms of service for YouTube and 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 uh, Twitch. You know, it's like did you, did, before you like 
put a thing in the system or what, I don't know. They're like, does this video contain any content? You know, that would be, you know, whatever you have to check the box. And it's like, does it, you know, promote drug use? And I'm like, are you kidding? Like, it's so, it's like one like, of the things in in the world of producing all of this show that I'm just like, are you kidding? Quilt nerd? No, we don't have any like violent content. We don't have any, no, I don't know. No, I'm not, I'm not sure. I think, you're, I think you're safe. I think, I think you're safe. So safe. I've seen a certain very famous Twitch streamer with blue hair. I won't name any names. Probably nobody here knows who they are. I've seen them yell at a child. Oh, so. yeah. It's fine. <laughs> we don't do things like that we're here. Yeah. We're just a little salty. Yeah, we're a little salty. salty. Exactly. And we use a very sophisticated trapunto technique yes. to roll yes. blood. Yes. <laughs> no, you don't roll blood. But anyway, whatever. I'm sorry. Let's just... Give the people what they came here Give for. Why are we? Give the people what they came for. So, okay. Molly, I don't know if you've made it this far. Um, <laughs> I will not oh, be constrained by terms of service. No, I shall not, SJ that, Pepper. That's right. And, and Ivana says, Hannah, I'm here for that episode, as I love to swear. You know what? I do too, Ivana. Like, yeah, Quilt Nerd Thank After. You. you know what? Actually, Quilt Nerd After Dark, we've been joking about that. Sometimes we'll talk about quilts, and we will do it at like 3 a.m. And that way the UK <laughs> people and all the people around the world yeah. can see it. Cake, you can choose whether you want to be part of that or not because like at 3 a.m. but like quilt nerd after and we'll get rowdy like rowdy you know what i mean no wait but it'd be really fun but it's the just, internet so it'd be it's rowdy. although quilt saint politic just mentioned that they watched a uh, a twitch show people do it just doing bong heads so doing, i think oh there's my. nothing that you doing could do here heads. that is so but see, you know? things, that is in such i feel i mean no shade no disrespect to anybody but like i feel that's in poor taste I mean, I mean, whatever. Like by know, all means, do all the bong rips you want to do. I nah, thing. But like, I mean, whatever. Mean, but bong rips. But here, but you know what it's gonna do? And this is how I'm gonna get this whole thing. I'm gonna turn the ship. I'm gonna get us back. Awesome, because because you know what, <laughs> sweet peas and taters came for quilt content, and, and I think we switch. have some. We have some fascinating stuff for you, sweet pea. No, no, I'm just but kidding. And I thing. love it. This is amazing. This here's is live thing. streaming is different than any other format. You can do this. You can just hang out and, and, and chill, you know, and hang out and but talk about it. But if you something. turn your living, your dwelling space into something that resembles a hot box, your quilts are going to smell. You're going to stinky is, quilts. You know what? Mom mom has talked about this. Yes, exactly. When you, when you, uh, when you, when, if there's a smoker in the house and you're making quilts, you know, your quilts are going to smell like smoke. It's yeah. true. You know, and if smoker you are, smokes, if man. You're, if you're I, I like a cigarette from time to time. Oh, here I go. Here I go. But you don't blow it into your quilt while oh, you're sewing. Are you you don't in, infuse oh. your quilt. Oh, no. No. You don't want your quilt giving people contact. Hi, that's terrible. Oh, my God. No. Anyway. No. No. If I have, if I, it's like one, like every once in a while. You, you know that. Yourself. You do not. You are grown. You do not have to justify. Marianne Bonds has just reminded you she's still here. Oh. <laughs> MJ. Okay. About <laughs> Sorry. Girls. Still here. Okay. Let's do. Let's 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 finish this out. Let's do this. <laughs> so here's the thing. So so some of you. See, Mama, hydrating. Some of you have uh, have no. I'm going to take the jazz out, but we're not going to change the slide just yet. But what we're going to do, Molly, I, Molly has a young child, and so she may have not. Uh, she may be putting <laughs> darling in to bed. But um, but what we, what I want to do uh, before we sign off, and I have to get on a flight at 6 a.m. My flight leaves from LaGuardia, so inhumane. I don't know why you did I that to yourself. Be in, because it was nonstop and cheaper. Okay, that's why. That's why I did it. That's, a flight to Chicago should be nonstop. Where the heck were they going to send you? <laughs> Dallas. Dallas. Yeah. Okay. God bless our Texans. Anyway. Yes, no, 100%. They're cool, so, like, fiends. Texans are amazing cultures. Yeah. Anyway, um, so, so, you know, Molly and I, so on this very show, really cool stuff happens all the time. Every show, right? Mm -hmm. Like tonight, like really oh, neat yeah. stuff. It's so, it's so much fun, you know? And uh, come this way. I don't want you to get it cut off. Okay. Um, so on this show months ago, we were talking about... Um, uh, quilts, imagine that. And, and we were talking about uh, how the quilt world today, the quilt ecosystem, the quilt system uh, is really healthy. And, and everyone who gets a little bit older, including me, is like, oh no, you know, what's happening to quilting? Like, <laughs> I'm not there yet, but, but it's normal to say, you know, oh, the kids these days, you know, the, everything's dying. You know? The, yeah, of the, the of genre course, or whatever. It's, it, it's right on time. Scene. If you're feeling that way about like technology <gasps> and. I'm talking, I'm sorry, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, you can't do that. No, 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 no I um, What's happening? So, 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 so we were talking about like the, the state of the, the quilt, quilt system. Okay. And, um, and we were saying, you know, my mom and, and many of you were, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, it's true. 
Oh, God. Uh, is Mr. Domestic here in the chat? That would be very interesting. Uh, one day, perhaps. So so we were talking about how um, we, we are... Uh, uh, the people who are quilt-making now... The, the Bicentennial, the Whitney Museum of Art, the whole uh, uh, great quilt revival of the 19, 1976 through the 80s, mm -hmm. you know, the quilt, the art quilts we've been looking at, you know, the 80s and the 90s. So there was this revival of quilt making. Which we was say, our mom's point of entry into absolutely. Whole, like, career and all that. Absolutely. Stuff. And to have a revival means something has to be, you know, dead. To, to, to revive something means dormant. to bring it back from, dormant. yeah, dormant, fall, fallow. Where, yeah. Yeah. But uh, while it's true that quilts have always been made in this, in this country and mm -hmm. that they never really stopped, and, and there, it's kind of a misunderstanding that no one was making quilts, you know, in the 40s and 50s, like after World War II until 1976. It's not the case. In fact, some of my favorite quilts, Rod Kirikoff, like many people have, were making quilts in the, in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. Really interesting stuff. But it's true that the masses were not quilting quite as much because uh, better living through chemistry, uh, the 1950s, you know, polyester blankets were like all the rage, and sure. quilting seemed very old fashioned for a lot of people. So Absolutely. there wasn't, really? right, yeah, yeah, for a lot of folks who wanted like, you know, the lady pepperell sheets and stuff like that. Okay? Mm. So there was this resurgence. Well, that was 50 years ago. And when we look around quilt making today, we look at the Modern Quilt Guild, we look at like, I don't know, this show, like there's a show on Twitch about quilts. Like that's that's a pretty healthy thing. I mean, we don't have thousands of people watching yet, yet, but th but there's there's enough energy in quilt making that there's quilt con and there's uh, uh, AQSG is still around. There's and, you an know, industry. And there's an industry, it's like a $3 billion industry, yeah. okay? Yeah. So the question that came up on this show is like, is the, the momentum from the quilt revival of the 1970s into the 80s, is that really still what is fueling where we are today in the quilt system? Or is it something else? And on the show, we discussed it. And then Molly, Molly and I, Molly Squared, uh, yay, yay, Molly Squared. Okay, you're here, you're here. So Molly and I. Wait, what? The 70s were not yes. 50 years ago. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. The, the, True. Well, wait, wait, no. No, they are. The, the, they are. I think the 70s were almost 50 years ago. Almost. I mean, yo, I was born Seven, in 1975, and listen, I'm, I'm looking down the barrel of 50. So. Yeah, I mean, look, 1970 to 20, 2020 is, to 2000 is 30, and then 2020 is 50. Right. Kind of. I mean, we're close. We're checking the math. It's 1971, 1971 was the Whitney Museum of Art exhibit. Right. It's 2022. It's 50 years. So, anyway. So, so what I want to talk to Hannah about, okay, because Molly and I, we took all these ideas that people had uh, on this show talking about, is there a third wave? What's different today that is still fueling the quilt ecosystem, the quilt mm -hmm. world, that's different from, that, that would have changed since the bicentennial and all of that? And so Molly and I pitched the idea uh, that, that sort of generated on this show to AQSG seminar and the American Quilt Study Group. We don't have to go too, too much into that, but we wanted to do a poster presentation on this idea that in fact there's these different elements that are part of a third wave of quilt making in America. And we want to identify that as such because it, it will help other people understand what is the state of quilt making in America today? What is, what is, what's the deal, right? Like was the, <laughs> there was the colonial uh, revival in around the turn of the century. And then there was the great American quilt revival in the last quarter of the 20th century. And then what, then what happened in the 21st century? So what I want to talk to you, Hannah, about okay. is the third wave. Now I'm going to make a small, there's five things that through this show and the um, and the work Molly and I have done mm -hmm. is we have talked about there's five things that we think are different. Th five things that have happened since the Great American Quilt Revival that have kept quilting really relevant mm -hmm. and and changing and fresh for people today in yes. the, in 2022 and, and engaged the current generation. Of Correct things that are different, gotcha. way different from what they, what life was like back at the revival. And I'm going to scroll through these nifty slides I made, and we're going to talk about each one just briefly, because Hannah has interesting things to say about this, because she's from outside of things, but she has the New York opinion too. Here are the five things we think make a case for there being a third wave re revival or a third wave of quilt making interest in the United States. And, and beyond, but we can only really focus on what we know. Yes. Smartphones. Smartphones changed everything. We'll talk about it. 
Uh, social media. Clearly. Social media was not around. It has a lot to do with everybody who's here right now. You know, yep. quilt, quilts on We're social media. We're literally on a social media platform. Yeah. The, the Modern Quilt Guild, the third wave. The Modern Quilt Guild didn't start until 2010. Okay? And you, you know the least about that, but right. we'll talk about it. And then pop culture, you know, quilt, quilts being cut up for use in clothes mm -hmm. and things, and quilts in Vogue magazine, home deck issue. Pop culture, quilts show up a lot in pop, pop culture recently. They did back in, in um, the first round. ASAP Rocky wore one to the Met Ball and, 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 and broke the internet. So And, and we yeah. know Zach Foster, we know the fellow yeah. who helped out with that. And then, oh, sorry, and then the fifth the one, the <laughs> Pandy, which by the way, I didn't know. People in New York call the, pan the pandemic, the pandy. Yeah. So you heard it here first. Pre -pandy, we can start pre -pandy, post pandy, pandy shacks. The, the people who have the the things outside, the places to yeah, eat outside the restaurants, restaurants. Pandy shacks. The pandy shack. Yeah. So so anyway, so let's so let's just look at this. You know, again, I I, I want to. We've had a great show. Oh, Pinterest, Kiwi Kathy. Oh, I love word. that. Yeah, I Pinterest. Love that. We didn't even contemplate we Pinterest. Did, so well, right. well, but that would definitely it's falls a under great. It falls under social media, and I want to talk about it. Yeah. So yeah. let's let's touch on each of these because I'll tell you, I'll tell you right now is that Molly and I uh, want part of our research that we're going to present at, at the seminar is a survey, and mm. all of you definitely will be tapped to take that survey. Just like when did you start quilting? You know, just really general questions. Uh, about about what you're doing and that and it's going to be like an official survey like all like official because molly's super smart and she like knows stuff and she's like a master librarian and stuff and she's really oh, great and, and yeah oh yeah and so we're going to do this and have some actual data behind it so it's it's exciting and when you present a poster at aqsg it's like your first findings and research and then we're going to go on and like write a paper and stuff it's so exciting and it happened on quiltner so 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 let's just let's touch on these so smartphones okay like when when my mom when our mom was making quilts and stuff there was no way to share the quilt you were making right instantly no so that was like no one was getting process picks no 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 and um, you certainly weren't going to get your you know slr or your your polaroid camera most likely yeah mm -hmm. most likely you were not getting out your your you know 35 mm. millimeter or your your Polaroid camera to take pictures of quilts and of your quilt in progress. I mean, I'm sure there are people who did. Yes, but it was. But yes, yeah. for whom? You know, like. Well, magazines would come to an artist studio and take pictures of their studio, but they had to be pretty fam famous, and maybe yeah. spouses or friends were taking pictures. But it's taken so long to get to the point where we can be making an art form that people even cared, right? Sure. To take pictures of process. It's a really good point. Yeah. And by the way, I want everybody in the chat to know that we can do a transcript of the chat. And, and Molly and I will be. So any comment you have that we maybe I don't mention or that we, you know, don't notice, everything that you have to say about this, 1,000% will be... Court, court Quilts, that's very interesting. What does Court Quilts have to say? It's, Read it. Well, court Quilts says, honestly, anthropology and other high-end rustic rustic stores, that shabby chic thing that was a, had a minute there, um, inspired me to make nice quilts because they were pretty... They were pretty ripped off designs also mm -hmm, true mm -hmm. and I couldn't afford them because who the hell can anthropology is crazy right. at the time so I wanted to make my own uh, glad I wasn't aware of how much more expensive making your own quilt is <laughs> yeah yeah it's a good point <laughs> it's like cooking at home too you're like um <laughs> really so interesting much more affordable, not but really interesting yeah yeah, yeah. Um, Zachros uh, says hey Zachros it's good to see you um little champagne cork for you. Uh, Pre-cuts kind of play into social media. Oh yeah, pre-cuts oh, made it so that it was easier to follow along and copy YouTube tutorials and such. Indeed. Oh, Molly. Molly says, I'm taking notes. That's very good. Pre-cuts, isn't that what like the quilt packs that Fonz and Porter did? Oh, oh yeah. So. Oh, oh, oh. No, you go ahead. No, 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 no. So, so Fonz and Porter, the, you know, the, cause you know, we're like quilt mafia. <laughs> the, the, True. The, the five families. Yeah, the uh, Porters, the Fonzes, the... The Dones. The Brackens. Ah, and the, the five yeah. families. I love <laughs> it. Totally I love families. it. The five families. I love it. I love um, it. So one of the things that, that was um, one of, the, one of the, the bits of merch, one of the first, like the, the Ur merch, like the first merch, <laughs> were these quilt, these quilt kits that, that Mom and Liz sure. put together. And it was like, you know, you, you see the quilt in the magazine and you're like, I want to make that. Where do I get the fabric? And the answer was that we worked as child labor at our dining room table. Not child labor. Not okay. dining room tables. Sorry, oh, yes. Far on. into the night until our little hands bled, putting pre-cut 
quick squares of fabric into Ziploc freezer bags, like legit Ziploc freezer bags, and sliding in an eight and a half by eleven sheet of instructions. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! I haven't thought about that in years. Oh my god! I did do that. Oh yeah. Mom. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Did we get money? We did. We did. We got like we ten did. cents one oh, per. Oh my yeah. god. It was a pittance. It was terrible. <sighs> yes. So we packed hundreds, yay, thousands of of. So anything if anyone you know ever got a Fonz and Porter. Pre, uh, like pre-cut quilt kit. That was that was packed by a Fawn's child. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. I didn't think about. It. By the way, quilt kits and and pre pre-sold kits. Mom is calling. Oh, she's calling us. She can't call us, Mom. Wait a minute. She can. She can definitely. <laughs> she's she's hold, calling. Listen, we have a rebuttal. <laughs> I have to. I have to hold and accept the uh, cake. Because you got cake Wait, on the line. Hold cake. On. Okay. So if I answer Mom's call, I have to put you on hold. This has never happened before. Mom, call back. This has never happened before. This is exciting. Um, all right, hold and accept. Right. Mom, mom, you're on. Okay, mom, you have to mute. Hi. Okay, no, I have to. Mm, okay, hold on. I have to mute. Hold on, hold on. Mom, can you? Mom, can you hear me? Oh, I know what to do. Mom, hold on. I'm gonna invite her to the Zoom. Okay. I'm gonna invite you to the Zoom. That's what I'm going to do. So while you're doing that, what should, what should we talk about? Well, uh, first of all, let me say that quilt kits are not new. Maria Webster was doing uh, that back in the day. Um, Mom, I'll text you the link to the Zoom, and you can talk about how you didn't. Padma, yes. In fact, Padma asked, if, did you enjoy packing the fabric? Honestly, yeah. I mean, it was fun. Like, we, you know, couldn't, like, eat chips or anything because you didn't want to get the fabric greasy. So but... I was miserable. <laughs> It was actually, I, I, we, it wasn't like she had to twist our arms to do it. it. We were compensated, and it was fine. So I'm just being dramatic. But but let's get back to smartphones, please, and yes, social please. media. Okay. Right, so right, right, sharing right. things with people instantly, right? This, this is a very big deal. They weren't doing that back at the revival time. Or or in, in 2000, the smartphone, I remember, it was like mm -hmm. Obama and the iPhone. 2008. Yeah. 2008. Yeah, yeah. It was a big deal. No. Okay. Okay, so. You see what this is happening. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, okay. Da, da, da. Um, and we've been corrected too that the um, the Fonza Porter kits, according to Marianne, included the required yardage for a quilt, but they were not the pre cuts like today. Okay. okay. I, see, I, just, I swear I remembered those stacks of triangles, but maybe I just hallucinated that because it was so onerous. You are ridiculous. Okay, so let's let's talk. I don't, you know, I do want to. This is super fun, and I just <laughs> want to stay on the smartphones. But but mom is gonna call in on the Zoom. Uh, so we can hear from her. We can hear her defend herself uh, in terms of her <laughs> yes, illegality, her Ill illegal. She's right up there with what's what was that? Um, what was the gal in the morning the morning show? Who who was um, Kathy Lee? Yes. Oh, oh my God. Okay, Kathy Lee. Time to go. So anyway, so here's what I want to say about smartphones. Nothing is better for quilts, right? Than a square box that is like on a computer. I mean, yeah. Quilts are square. Are beautiful square-ish or rectangular um, uh, beautiful things and so they fit perfectly into an Instagram post right they fit perfectly into these um, into these uh, boxes of things that we want to share on social media so, so, so smartphones were really a big deal for quilt makers in the 21st century and that's that's the kind of what we're getting at okay so and social well, media because real quick right? and, yeah. and this and this actually is germane to this as yes, well. so, exactly. so, so these go together but they're separate right. okay. so cell phones the use of the smartphone facilitates social media. If we did not have smartphones, social media would be not remotely the, the force that it is today because we, we carry around with us everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. So, but you know, the, 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 the function of like a quilting bee or a quilt show or like um, even like, you know, county fair or state fair or whatever, like any, any time that like quilt makers would gather part of the joy and the fun and the function of that, the social part of it, was showing each other their work. Yes. Like, not just finished products, yes. but like their progress, yep. ideas, it was like workshopping and stuff too. So like, you know, so there's fundamentally a social angle to quilt making, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because it's, you know, you can do it in solitude, but, mm -hmm. but again, like there are these choices that quilt makers make. They make a choice to make a functional thing beautiful, they also make a choice That's to make right. a task, a social, a social event. That's right. Particularly if you're not allowed so much, like if you're you're you know tethered to house and home and hearth and kids and all that, 
if you're like, well, I'm going to do this practical thing, so let me go hang out with my friends, and we're working, but we're also interacting and connection building, all that stuff. It, it seems like social media facilitated mm -hmm. by smart technology is not a wild leap mm -hmm. from what, I mean, you know, if quilters, if it, had, it didn't exist, quilters would probably have invented it. Yes. Mm -hmm. In order mm -hmm. to facilitate quilt making. So, Indeed. you know, yeah. 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 It's a, it's a, it's a very, yeah, social. Uh, take a look at the chat and then right, the and chat. I'm going to get mom on the line and cake. Yeah. Someone, I forget the, the, the watch was saying that they had their, what was it? Four-year-old cleaning toilets the other week. I'm like, oh good. My God. Builds character. <laughs> no. Oh no. <laughs> Start them early. Absolutely. Yes. Yep. Okay, here's this. What's this? Oh, iPod Touch. Word and Bird Nerd, I remember those. Oh, Mom says, no need to dial me in, kids. Keep doing what you're doing. Right, well, I mean, if I just, cool. I just sent you a no, I just sent you a link, exactly. and uh, I uh, accidentally ended the meeting that Steph was on, or the, yeah, so, so please feel free. Uh, and Steph, sorry about that. So, yeah, so social media is a big deal. And I also think uh, it's interesting, too, because what you have is trends. And again, everybody who's commenting, it's like gold, right? It's so important and awesome. So thank you for your comments, even if we don't catch them uh, particularly. But the conversation's uh, fantastic. So so the social media part, too, you have trends that, 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 that spread like wildfire. And, and also, uh, you know, so the art quilt um, that uh, was, was growing in the 1980s, particularly in Ohio and California and in Massachusetts, a little bit in New England, but Massachusetts in particular, you know, with Michael James and, and uh, Nancy Halpern, and, uh, I believe. And, um, and so, so you have these hotspots back then, but now you have social media. So yeah. somebody tags you or somebody shares something and suddenly it's huge. So the Modern Quilt Guild comes in Or if in you a like something, the algos are going to get a hold of it and just be like, do you like this? Well, how about this? Exactly. You like quilting, what about this? Exactly. Yeah, and the more quilters who got smartphones who got on social media, the more there was for the algos to share and, oh, yeah. and start doing things. And so and the other thing, too, is the, the G's Bend exhibit. So the Whitney Museum of Art in 1971 yep. did the Abstract Design in America Quilt Show. Jonathan Holstein, who is a huge quilt nerd and is always mm -hmm. watching the show. He's in the lurker lounge a lot of times but he pops in the chat sometimes so 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 that was the first big Make quilt show in yeah eat a chip in uh in a major museum okay so then but then um uh in 2002 the g's bend quilt show came to the whitney mm. and so with the g's bend thing that was before before uh smartphones but those were shared on social media and on the internet more than any quilts I think that have ever been shared on social media. Wow. And so the Modern Quilt Guild, to me, one of the direct lines, uh, uh, one of the, the roots, and they've said so, right? But the, but the roots of the Modern Quilt Guild aesthetic came directly from the, the quilts of G's Ben, and that was all social media, 21st century kinds of stuff. Um, Yvonne thinks a lot of kids these days are too darn lazy. I agree. Agreed. I think it's true. Um, yep. So social media, okay. Reese, Reese says, uh, she's commenting and, and chat, chatting with Ivana. I love it. Reese, it's so good to see you. I'm glad you're here, if I didn't say so before. Um, and okay, so the third wave, we won't talk too much about the Modern the, Quilt the Guild. The McQuig, I was like, the, what is that? The McQuig, the Modern Quilt Guild, 20, 2009, 2010, uh, Modern Quilt Guild. You know, it's just, it's a cultural shift uh, in quilting. In fact, when I was at QuiltCon, a lot of quilt nerds were there too. We got to hang out, do a meetup. Um, you know, it's the institution now. I think it's finally, yeah, yeah. So was it, yeah. so so what, I mean, and educate me if you would, because I, I missed all of this. Sure. I was, I don't know, I was vibing somewhere. <laughs> oh, you were having a, having a blend. You were having a weed. I was, I was you doing, were having was, a weed. I was doing the pot somewhere in, oh, in, in Lord. the Bronx. No, no, okay, so, but in all seriousness, I was definitely not doing that. Um, so was the Modern Quilt Guild... Was it a was it a, fra a faction that split off from something else? You or could was say it, that. Or was it formed in response to a perceived uh, gap? Both. I mean, okay. I think I think yeah, it was. We could yeah, I could talk in in Los Angeles. Three women didn't find what they wanted to find mm. in traditional guilds, but they wanted to make quilts because you know we do want. Yeah. It's like a human need, right? Mm -hmm. And so they wanted to make quilts for ba a friend who was having a baby and whatnot. So they started their own quilting. Group, mm. whatever that became the modern quilt guild and now it's national it's international and it's huge cool. and it's so huge that and the people in the traditional guilds are you know so is there beef um there was like at the beginning and jets. Oh, like... oh it was sharks it was shark sharks and jets it was a little bit okay. um anyway yeah it's been an interesting 
thing to see the guard shift, if you will. Yeah. So, yeah, so the modern field goes. We can talk a little bit more about that. Do you uh, want to get cake back on this? I do want to get cake back. Oh, okay. Oh, thank God. Oh. Cake. Cake, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Uh, yeah, I'm, so, are we, I'm so sorry. Are we muted? Uh, no, we're good. Okay, good. Okay, you're good. Sorry, Kate. I'm sorry about that. See, Marianne. No problem. Mary, it's Marianne. That's it all. The other Mary Kate points out, oh, so much beef. Feed oh. lots. Feed lots full of beef. <laughs> nice. Nice. That is. That's Mwah. real good. As, a, as farm kids, yes. Thank In, you. Indeed. Uh, and now, Bonnie. Bonnie points out, and now we all belong to both. We all belong to both. Many people belong to a tr traditional guild or the guild they used to belong to, and the modern. Because why the heck not? It's like exactly. so you learn from them, and you apply it here, and you take this, and you give it some zest back there. I mean, like, but but you know what? Yeah, what's I'll interesting? And Molly, you know what's interesting about this very moment of the conversation is that it's that animus actually that is important to note because this sort of class. You know, if somebody if somebody's arguing about something, that's better than if they just don't care. For sure, it means right? it matters. Exactly, it means it's dynamic. It means that there's something to fight Probably. for. We, it means there's something to fight for, and people feel passionate enough about a thing that they're going to be like, no, I'm, this way's better, that way's better. And so it's 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 great if there's some some clashing because the thing is still alive. And so the Modern Quilt Guild in 2010, you could say, you know, really was part of this third wave. This. Take them, take them away, and bring me another lover. Um, so, so the third wave, uh, I think the modern quilt good is, is a very important thing to point out. So that's number three of these like five things that we think we've identified as being part of the thing. Oh, and by the way, before I go to the, the four out of five, I meant to do this at the top of the show. Uh, I'm going to read to you the very short mm. abstract. Yes, yeah, please, go on, also, go on, please, let's, please. Let's take a moment because um, Penny Catherine yeah. makes an excellent point. In-person contact with quilting would include association with family quilt makers, which I did not have exposure oh, to. Oh, so, interesting. Yeah. So first first generation quilters, um, they say I also had only heard of tied quilts, or I had only heard of tied quilts, mm. referring to the time before 1990. In other words, without social media, a person would have had to have in-person mm. quilt experience in order to become aware of the art form. Mm. I mean, or like I accidentally stumbled across a craft magazine or something, but like... You know, what are the odds? It depends right, on where you are. Right, right. Yeah, so social media so, yeah. spread it. Oh, Stephanie's got her cat. Oh. Okay. What's her, is that Nancy or is that? It's Nancy. Nancy. Stephanie's got her cat. I'll take a picture. So, it's Nancy. So, Nancy. So before we, uh, this is a very short little thing, but just for the people who just came in or the people who are like, I think I know why we're talking about this, but I'm not sure. This is what Molly and I submitted to uh, American Quilt Study Group for our uh, thing that we want to do. And, and that we got the thumbs up on. And it all is quilt nerd, y'all. I mean, when it's like special thanks to you, mm. you, us. <clears throat> early in the 20th century, early in the 20th century, the colonial revival put quilts back into the hands and homes of American women seeking authenticity after a period of intense industrialization. So we're talking the 1900s, something or others to like the 1918s. Yeah, yes, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Following a fallow stretch, mid-century, flickers of activity in the late 1960s gave way to a flood of renewed interest in quilts and quilt making in the 1970s, with the Whitney Show and the Bicentennial, with growth continuing in the 80s and 90s. We call this period the Great American Quilt Revival. With a $4.2 billion industry and millions of quilt makers in the United States, enthusiasm for quilts remains strong today. Could residual momentum from activities 50 years ago still be fueling the quilt's popularity in 2022? Through rigorous research, well, I mean, it will be, yes, yes of course. Through, it's true, it's really true, we're not kidding. But through rigorous research and survey data collection and analysis, approved by the University at Buffalo's Institutional Review Board. Look at you. Well, that's all Molly, okay, let's be honest. But we, we are all rigorously researching every time the show uh, goes live. <clears throat> we will propose that 12 years ago, American quilt culture entered its third wave. That's a, that's a proper noun. Third wave, an ongoing period, an ongoing period of robust growth and dynamism entirely distinct from the revival. We have identified five key factors that sparked and continue to define this epoch. And those are the three five factors we're talking about. Yeah. Da -da 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 -da. Um, through quantitative and qualitative data uh, collected via survey, we will ask quilters about their experiences and perceptions in this new era of quilting and discuss the results through a historical and sociological lens. Well, heck, I'd buy that for a dollar. I'd, I'd give that a grant. Yeah? 
Sure. <laughs> Take my money. We're working real hard. Okay. So, so isn't that cool? That and that came out of this show, y'all. That's cool. So, so, the, so then pop culture. Now, this is where I really wanted to ask Hannah. And just so you know, the last one is the pandy, the pandemic. So we're gonna we're gonna end on that. And thank you for for hanging in. I know tonight went a little bit, little a little bit long, but wait, mask making. Oh, mask making. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, the mask making with the pandemic. So many people started oh, sewing with oh, the masks. Oh, I, I, I was just like masks and like general jewelry. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Well, in fact, that's what that has been. Everything I've sewn in the last. That's a whole other <laughs> that, thing. That's we should. Yeah. Did a whole big series of pandy masks. Indeed. Some Follow, of which are at the in the museum in Lincoln. The, some of Hannah's pandy masks are in the museum in Lincoln, the International Quilt Museum. Three Hannah has work in there. So my mother does. Hannah does. No. Uh, that's fine. And Rebecca. So Rebecca and I got to get on it. But let's 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 okay, talk so about this. Culture. So this is Hannah's really interesting insight. Why I thought this would be worth talking about tonight on the show, the pop culture thing. And what we mention in here, what we're talking about, is the fashion thing. Quilts as fashion in Vogue, in Harper's Bazaar, in Women's Wear Daily. The stuff I made the video about that people, some people hated me for, and other people loved me for. Um, yeah, that would be like that. <laughs> yeah, right. I took a ride on the internet, and <laughs> right. then and then also um, in Home Deck magazines and all of the stuff there. Uh, so so Hannah saw something interesting in yes. Brooklyn and Bushwick. So yes. just talk a little bit. Witnessed about it. That. Witnessed it personally, and also and this and this yes, figures yes. into what. Um, D.D. Brew, Brew, Brew Crew. D.D. Brew Crew. Yeah. Yes. Do you think Laura Ashley, Ralph Lauren, and Martha Stewart have an influence on this revival? Yes. Yes, and I think this is and part of the pop culture thing, Dee Dee. Fabulous. Yeah. And they also benefit from it. This is a great, this is great. This is going into the mix. Right. Okay, so. Yes, so good. So in New York City, particularly in certain parts of Brooklyn, in like, I'd say the early, like 2000s, I mean, and of course I got here then, so it was underway before I arrived. It's not like I got here and this started, but, um, you know, there was this sort of this figure of the hipster which, mm-hmm. you know, that that's from like the 20s. You know, hipsters were, like hipster, the, the term hipster has meant a lot of different things over the decades. Mm-hmm. And so like, but like the Brooklyn hipster, the Williamsburg hipster. It, I, I mean, I find it annoying. Anyway, but that's well, not the point. Right, so it was like, you know, in, in, a, in, a, in a stereotypical little nutshell, this was sort of a gentrifying person in their 20s, like early, early to mid, early 20s to yeah. early 30s, who are moving into like, you know, edgy neighborhoods or basically just were like, you know, middle and lower income black and brown neighborhoods and where the rent was cheap and they got pushed out of Manhattan so they wind up in Brooklyn they keep going right. further and further into Brooklyn chasing cheaper rents and taking, you know, and bringing and, and you know, changing the face and the tenor of all these these neighborhoods which is a whole, you know a whole thing. Huge thing, huge thing. Oh. So, so you know leaving for a moment the, the gentrification part of it which has its own massive discourse and, and critique around it so but part of this whole sort of hipster thing which is when when it kind of soured a little bit when when observers of hipsterdom soured on it they would make fun of hipsters because it's like it was all about this like mm-hmm. this pursuit of authenticity and homespun sort of ironic kitschy kind of stuff and so you'd see you know grown grown women in you know like little like pigtails crocheting on the subway and like you know, 22-year-old dudes who had dry growing their facial hair like Civil War generals. <laughs> You're like, oh, uh, like so much wax in your mustache. Really, like, how do you even manage? I do not find that attractive. No, and then they'd be wearing but whatever. Like, Eric's got a beard. It's all good, but like, no, 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 no shade to beards. I love a beard. I love a beard. Well, don't wax it till it's like clunk clunk. Like that's. You just, know what I have to weird. say about that? Okay, go on. You know what I have to say about that? <laughs> Very nice work with the soundboard. Okay, I'm getting okay, it. I'm getting okay. it. Okay. So anyway, so I think that, I think that there was this sort of like ironic, mm-hmm. I observed an ironic, a pursuit of sort of ironic crafts, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, I'm going to learn how to play the ukulele and I'm going to bother the f- out of people at parties. <laughs> and like, okay, so how long are you going to play the ukulele? You're not going to become a, a maestro on the ukulele. Mm-hmm. So some people set it aside, got rid of their ukulele. Some people took up knitting and were like, that's cute. And they made like a sock or two mm-hmm. and, or a scarf, like a, a wormy looking scarf. And that was it. And some people took up quilting, applique, mm-hmm. um, and made baby quilts mm-hmm. for their friends who were having babies, because that was mm-hmm. the sort of age demographic where a lot of that happens. Mm-hmm. And so I think that I think that there was sort of that 
kitschy, ironic, sort of Portlandia, put a bird on it uh, kind of vibe going yeah, on yeah. At, the, at the time. Yeah. And I think, Etsy is a big one too. I love oh my gosh, well, all that of the, the comments. That was the origin. So good. That was the genesis of Etsy. Yep. Yep. You know, exactly. Whole time, yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. And so, and Etsy yeah. persists, and it pleases me that it does. I use it frequently. It's great. Etsy's great. Etsy's so good. Oh my god. Um, so yeah, but I think that you know, there's a lot of that. A lot of people who dabbled with different crafts mm-hmm. out of irony and sort of like this sort of hipster sensibility. It like was a, an artisanal time. It was. I'm, I'm <laughs> gonna do. Yes, it was an artisanal time. It was an artisanal time. But they were like, oh, let me be this sort of quirky manic pixie crafter. Right. And I think some of them moved on and mm-hmm. got bored or like you know whatever, and their focus shifted. But then other folks, it took, and they were like, hey, mm-hmm. like this is actual shit. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna keep doing it. Mm-hmm. So I think that mm. the um, mm. yeah, I think I think that it wasn't you know it wasn't as noble and as as fundamental as like the bicentennial or right. like like Amer- for God and country. And right. Well, no, no, well, it was just well, like, and oh, but at the cute. time, <laughs> at the time though, you have to remember Vietnam, Nixon. Oh yeah. You know, race riots. Like the roots, roots. Alex Haley's roots show was the number one. It's, it, yes. Millions of people watch it, and they all watch it because there was just a few, you know, uh, networks. I watched that when it aired. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so people were really doing this back to the land thing. They were looking for authenticity, simplicity, right? And and you know, this right. is all kind of like, does a quilt mean simplicity? Whatever. You know, it's it, it's very uh, complicated. But but that need for, you know, like. Uh, um, connection and stuff is also true for this generation as well yes you know but there was this weird sort of ironic overlay to it's it. true it, it was kind of done right. with a wink whereas yeah, it was yeah. not it's like yeah it was, there it was, was no irony in the great by the bicentennial no. it's so interesting <laughs> so this was the sort of performative authenticity and wholesomeness interesting yeah. and i'm just saying i'm talking about brooklyn and i'm talking about like right. the pacific northwest right. <laughs> like these are these these are places where this happens so interesting. like yeah and i think that you know, ironically, mm-hmm. <laughs> or, or interestingly, mm-hmm. it actually that was if I, I could, I would not ascribe the the third wave to that alone. I think that would it's it's a it's a flimsy plank, but I think with the other things that you're bringing into it, I think that that it was irony that some people were like, oh damn, this really does nourish my soul. <laughs> I won't tell anybody, but I'm gonna keep doing it. Yeah, you right, I mean? exactly. And what's interesting is like that the people who are ironic about quilts or, or using quilts in some different way, those were the artists in the, in the 1970s and 80s who were really subverting, you know, stuff like that. But, but I mean, there was not any like, I'm going to make a quilt. <laughs> like, like <laughs> it, it wasn't like that. It was a, it was a sincere kind of thing. At least yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm speculating, you know, we weren't there, but so I think that's really they interesting. They weren't trying to be droll. The pop culture thing had irony, but it also, but L. Riggs points something out that's really important with such a virtual transient culture. Quilts are tangible. And oh, textiles yeah. hold a power not found in a lot of a lot Absolutely. of other arts. So why did quilt stick? It's like, well, it's did you know and I've said, and this is what I it's one of the arguments I made against the, the cutting up a quilt so you don't know what the hell you're cutting up to make clothes. It's like may, perhaps the more digital we get, yeah. the more, you know, um, parasocial we get, mm. perhaps the more important these old quilts are. Perhaps the more important they are to sure. not cut them up because because we don't have things like that anymore. Things are very transient and they and they, they're cycles you know, recycled, uh, uh, or they're, they're, they're transient, yeah. Mm-hmm. And so yeah. maybe it's more important than ever to hold on to quilts like the one you're looking at here, which was made by, um, I believe, a man in Alabama in like, you know, 1880 or wow. something. I mean, it's just fantastic, and, and it's a, it'd be a great coat, you know. But instead yeah. it's in a book that helps us understand the time and place yeah. and the people who lived in the place that they lived. So, so yeah, so, so fascinating stuff. Um, <laughs> God, you guys, you guys are the best. Um, and so and so, pop culture in terms of New York City and stuff, and the hipster thing in Bushwick and Brooklyn, yeah. it's fascinating. And I wanted to ask Hannah about it. Now, the last thing, and this is where we're going to end the show. And Stephanie Cake, I love you so much. I, I said to her one time, I was like, I don't know, is it okay? Like the show goes late sometimes, and you just said, you're like, that's what I signed up for. <laughs> and I was like, it's true, you <laughs> did. But you know. It is a Tuesday night, so but it's also anniversary. I can't week, believe so it's ten thirty. I know, I know. We got, we, and I got to get up at four a.m. So let's Boy. just talk about this last piece <laughs> you of get all. Get up this. in fifteen minutes. Yeah, basically, I should just stay up. I should just say, um, so the third wave, uh, this this last thing, the pandy, the pandemic. I think it has a very, it's very important to point this out to write a paper about it. Damn mm. it, because if we're going to define what quilt making is today and how this landscape looks, you know, the pandemic. Oh my God, it has a lot to do with the State of the Union, as it were. And so do you started making, well, you've been making garments and making 
uh, work with textiles for a long time, but you did make masks, and sure. now you can do I show have us masks. Can you can show? Absolutely. Okay. Um, well, and I think, I mean... Go Good night, Mom. Mom's got to go to bed. Um, this transcript is going to rule. <laughs> uh, Dee Marie, if you're still here, I, I, you don't have to say so, uh, but you helped me once get a transcript. But Cake, you can probably figure it out. You know how to do a transcript, right? If, if so, I mean, we just... I know we can get it. It's not a big deal. Okay, she's nodding, yeah. Because, I mean, just the comments are just, like, gold. Everybody... So um, and Kenny, oh, hey Kenny, hi Kenny. Um, wasn't there a category at the Modern Quilt Guild show for pandemic quilts? I believe there was. I believe there was. Oh, Ruby Marta says Buona Notte, Marianne. Ruby Marta, are you are you Italian? Are you in Italy right Italia? now? Italia. Vive in Italia, Ruby. Ruby Buona Notte. God, God, Italian is the best. I took two years of Italian in college and guess what? I was partying with Ann Ehlers and my sister Hannah. And do I speak Italian? <laughs> no, I do not. No, But I know it when I see it. Buona notte, Ruby. Oh, Dee Marie. Look, Dee Marie is so hilarious. She's so awesome. And she just like, she's like, yo. When she comes in the, in the chat, she's like, yo. And then I'm like, Dee Marie, if you're out there, she's like, yo. We out here. Yo. So, so the pandy, um, the pandy shacks, that's what you call, I think I mentioned the restaurants that have the outdoor seating mm -hmm. now here in New York, the pandy shacks. Um, and Hannah's going to share some masks that she made, uh, with us so I could show you. Um, SJ Pepper, that's a great question. If I made a quilt during the pandemic, is it just automatically a pandemic quilt? That's a very good question. It's genuinely uh, interesting. Uh, <laughs> SJ Pepper, it's genuinely interesting. You know what I mean. It is a good question. Myra says, sustainability is very important to me, but my keeping my sewing and quilting practice sustainable will never include cutting up an antique or vintage quilt to make a coat. Damn it. That's what that's what I say. That's what I say. Um, okay, Hannah's sending yeah, me those. I was going to send videos, but that's going to take too long. I think. Oh, it felt like sweets? Okay, yeah. Keep going. We can, we can, we'll put Hannah's mask if we don't get them tonight into the Discord. If you're not a subscriber, you should definitely subscribe because you get access to the Discord. And we're going to do a giveaway in about five minutes. Five minutes is when we're going to do right. a giveaway, and then we'll close out the show with that giveaway uh, for from items from the Iowa Quilt Museum. So I almost forgot about that. We got to wrap this up right, so we yes. can get that I'm gonna done. Send you, I'm going to send you some of the ones that are in the museum, the ones that I okay, sent great, to great. Uh, Lincoln and then a couple extra ones. Yeah, great. So hang on, hold on. Oh. Bear with me. Ruby says I have a great uh, Italian accent. Hmm. Oh. Yes. Uh, Grazie. I'll think of other things. Grazie. Grazie, prego. Um, pew, pew, pew. Didi's got it. I finally saw the Lego movie. Pew, 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 pew. Um, okay, so Hannah's sending me those. Okay, so the pandemic, it, it, that's it. That's all I have to say about it. I'm going to grab the pictures of the giveaway we're going to do right now because it's late and we got to go, we got to do this stuff, man. We got to get going. I've got to get to sleep because Lord knows I got to get up early. If you are a subscriber, you could be the lucky winner of this awesome stuff. And mom helped uh, get all of this together, and I am really grateful to her. I think, I don't know if she, she didn't purchase things, but but she definitely helped pick them out. <laughs> she curated it. She, she, she curated it. So I am going to show you the things that you will get with the Iowa Quilt Museum giveaway. And let me just uh, make sure I've got, I hope that I've got everything here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, here we go. I got this. I got this going. Um, it's at the office. This this whole thing is boxed up, ready to give away. And so when I get home tomorrow, whoever wins this will get it. We'll get it. You will get it. Oh, oh, here it is. Here it is. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. It's a chicken. It's a chicken. It's that a chicken pot holder. It's it a little chubby chicken. Homemade. It's homemade. 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 Um, here, here's here's what we where we're starting. We're starting with the chicken. So thanks everybody. By the way, by the way, Hannah, Hannah, you're amazing. Thank you for the discourse from everybody in the chat. Fascinating, so good, Hannah. So good. It was awesome to be here oh in New York. So I, just, I love you so Ugh. much. Like you're amazing, and it was a great, great few days to like reconnect and just hang out. It was just totally. you're amazing. I just love you so much. Oh oh my God. God. Oh my God. She taught me everything I know. Almost. I didn't teach you a quilt. And you didn't teach me how to party. No, you did. You did teach me how to no, party. I was sorry. just trying to think of something silly. All right. All right. You, you did. Okay. So a chicken, a ch anything with a chicken or an animal on it, I'm, I'm a fan. So you get this. 
And this is this is to thank you people for everything that you've done to make this show possible. That's a that's a squirt bottle, Hannah, is what it is. Look, what is, I know. is it? Well, if you make quilts or you need to spray you got, something. When you need to moisten something. <laughs> when something needs moistening. When something needs moistening, you will be able to do it. Oh, You'll have sorry. it near at hand. You will have it near at yes. hand. Uh-huh. And you will, all, oh God, you will also have in your gift pack a magnet. Excellent. A lovely magnet. On the town square in historic Iowa. Yeah, and on the town square in historic Iowa. And the other Mary Kate notes, indeed, that everyone should follow Hannah on Instagram. Oh, and her, you. Kate will put it up there. She's uh, Amazon-esque. Amazon-esque. Uh, it's okay, says Hannah and Mary. What a great team. I agree. Thank you. Mm. Um, and then we've got the two pouches. Okay, Ooh, so, so this is from CNT Publishing. Two, like, canvas wax pouches. Oh, yeah, yeah. The zippers are great. They're strong. And indestructible. You get, indestructible. Yeah. And you get two of them in one pack. Mm -hmm. Yes. You also get the AQS Guide to Cold Care. Once you've made it, how do you care for it? Uh, I don't know. A, this is great. A fine, fine question. And you also get, okay, I don't have a close-up picture of this, but this is a Tula Pink fancy mm -hmm. tulip pink 14 by 10 medium project bag so you get a project bag with lemurs with lemurs and neon spots dots you get the you get the, the little pouches you get the spray bottle you get the aqs guide to cool care you get the, the chicken, chicken the chicken pad a little iowa gold museum brochure okay cool. and then the cool, the um tulip pink project bag which is like super cool and it's all from the quilt museum and it all goes uh toward i bought it there and so you know you're doing a good deed for the quilt museum it's a fine haul i know it's pretty cool right yeah by the way it's okay and dd brew crew sisters oh, so yeah. she's like i'm partial to sister oh, how it's angry okay cake cake will you do the honors please let's draw a winner oh oh okay okay do, here sorry, it comes I'm on the drum roll oh uh do we oh well we i can do this <laughs> So when you have a name, you let me know, Cake, and I'll run that. Or you can, and you can press it, Anna. Okay. Okay. I don't have to check to see that they're here. You're not going to believe this. Okay. It's oh. me. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, really. Yeah. <laughs> it's SJ Pepper. Wait, it's SJ Pepper? SJ Pepper? It's SJ Pepper. It's SJ Pepper. Are you still here? SJ Pepper, you better, you better be, you better be here. Sound off, SJ Pepper. She, she, I said something, so she's got to still be here. SJ Pepper for real? This is all randomized by computer. SJ yes. Pepper, you got it! Oh my god, here, here. SJ won. You know what? This is like SJ Pepper, she 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 jerks my chain and she oh, she busts she, your chops. she busts my chops and I love it. And the whole crowd loves it. Yeah. She's been a part of the yeah. show. She she you know, she when she shows up, she's got cork she quips. And and quirk, mm -hmm. she's quirk, she's brilliant, right? And we everybody on the show is brilliant, but it's really fun when Astro Pepper's around because you're so silly and funny yes. and you're smart. Anyway, congratulations, your name got picked. That's so cool. It's perfect for anniversary week that Astro Pepper gets a prize. Uh, you've earned it, my dear. You've earned it. Um, it's such a crack up. That's so it's fun. So cool and now I get to send you like you know a little note, you know, for you to okay, put on your put on your fridge. Uh, to know that whenever I whenever I bust your chops, you know, it's just like ugh, nothing but love, right? Um, yay! That's so much fun. SJ Pepper won the giveaway. I love it. Um, this is such a great moment. Oh my god, I'm totally going to cry. I love, I love this Showing so masks. much. I love it so much. Um, okay, so we did it, Hannah. Yes. You did a show the other night. You did a show today, just now. Uh, Cake, God bless you. I so appreciate you. And... I mean, I hope like hanging out with you guys. <laughs> it's pretty. It's a good time. It's a good time. It's I good. hope that um, for folks who can't come to the evening show, which I know sometimes it's not possible. Some many of you are asleep. Susanna, the, the, our great Susanna, the pie to Stephanie's cake, and you know the marketing genius who's already started posting to Facebook and brought new people over to the show. You know she's in Q8. You know she's sleeping right now. Yeah. But but so so for those folks, Thursday at 9 a.m. Central Time. Morning show, baby. We got an extra bonus show today uh, or uh, this week. So come, come to the morning show Thursday, 9 a.m. Central, and then on Friday night, the big blowout. We're gonna give away a quilt, a quilt made in Nepal, made in Nepal. We're gonna give that away. Uh, on Thursday, we're gonna give away that Pauline Burbage scarf from the quilt museum. So giveaway on Thursday morning, giveaway on Friday night. I'm gonna wear a fancy dress. I don't know. You should be there. We gotta celebrate. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. Come on, I can't do this thing to to nobody. <laughs> Are you kidding me? A dark screen. It's really sad. Right. 
Um, you're the best, oh, Hannah. The, thank you, everybody. Thank you for your comments. I'll be getting the transcript and looking at everything y'all say about what we talked about <laughs> about the third wave. Mr. Okay. Pepper's been lusting for that chicken. I. <laughs> you know what? This is why you deserve the prize. That's okay. exactly right. Good night, everybody. You're the best, and I will see you Thursday, I hope. And uh, tell somebody that you love that you love them, okay? Because that's yeah, important. This has been so okay. fun. So I fun. Just, I'm missing you, yeah. Oh, my God, I get a okay. We'll do it again. Yeah, 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 we'll definitely. Next we'll yeah, yeah, we'll do a bunch. Okay, bye. Toots. Alright.